Today, two South Division rivals prepare for a Big 12 battle. 17th BCS ranked Oklahoma travels to Waco, Texas to tackle the Baylor Bears. The Sooners are in the BCS hunt and the hunt for the Big 12 South Division crown. The Sooner balance offensive attack as defense is looking every which way, including up in the sky and up at the scoreboard. But time is running out for Oklahoma to climb up the BCS ladder. The Sooners are looking for a one-sided victory, but the Baylor Bears defense has plans of their own. A Big 12 head-banging showdown. 17th BCS ranked Oklahoma takes on Baylor next. made the trip down I-35 from Norman to Waco to support their surging Sooners. From Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco, Texas, it's Big 12 football presented by Kyocera. Today, 17th ranked Oklahoma will face the Baylor Bears, and here's what's at stake. OU's back in the title hunt in the South after Texas lost to Kansas State last week. The Sooners need to take care of business here today against Baylor and then beat Oklahoma State and then hope for AM to bump off Texas. If that's the case, OU will head to Kansas City for the Big 12 championship game. Welcome, everyone. Bill Land along with Gary Reasons. Glad to have you with us. Oklahoma's a team that's overcome a lot of adversity so far this season, Gary. And a big reason for their surging success has got to be their quarterback, Paul Thompson. Well, Paul Thompson, not only has he played well, but he's done a great job leading this football team. Not knowing that he's going to play quarterback coming into the season, he stepped into the shoes right there at the quarterback spot, and he's done a great job. He is a leader. He's a guy that has taken his team on his shoulders, and he's made great decisions with the football. Only six interceptions on the season, and Paul Thompson had his biggest game a week ago. I think he's playing his best football. We talked with Paul Thompson about leading this, this Oklahoma football team. You know, when you're younger, it's hard to come in and, and be as vocal uh, and get the respect from your teammates. But I think now I'm in the position, uh, as well as, you know, last year, to, to lead the guys and, and not only help myself, but make everyone else around me better. Well, the Sooners, certainly because of Thompson in part, have won five in a row. The other part of their story is their defense is once again dominant. Well, I think that the Baylor, the Oklahoma defense has done a great job this year coming in, playing a lot better late. They didn't play very well early. Just look at the numbers here. After the Oregon game, they were total defense is 97th in the nation, just ranked there. Now look at them at the 14th spot. They're the number one team in the Big 12 as far as total defense. And Bill, I think they're playing well in all phases. Their defensive secondary and their defensive front are playing very well. Well, they'll be challenged today. One thing about Baylor, this team can score. Their offense is powerful when they get it going. And last year, they scared the daylights out of Oklahoma and Norman before losing in a double overtime. Ziegler had one of the touchdowns in that game. He's back here today. When we return, Michael Lees, Billy Ray Smith, and Marco Far in our college football Saturday studio. You're watching Big 12 Football, presented by Kia Sarah on FSN. Kia Sarah's college football Saturday from the Big 12, 17th ranked Oklahoma against the Baylor Bears. The Sooners are 8 and 2, the Bears are 4 and 7. And today's college football game on FSN presented in high definition. Bill Land, Gary Reasons up top. Let's send it down to Jim Knox on senior day. All right, exactly right, Bill. 32 seniors will say goodbye today here in Waco. Talking to C.J. Wilson, their fine senior defensive back before the game. He thinks they're going to upset Oklahoma today because they have not yet put together the three phases of their game, offense, defense, and special teams. He's saying they're treating this one as their bowl game, just like they did last year against Oklahoma State, in which they won by 10 points. We will see if C.J. Wilson's prediction comes true today, guys. Thanks, Jim. Last year, they went five and six, two and six in the Big 12. They are three and four in conference play coming in here today. Our weather, I had to keep my partner's helmet and pads <laughs> off of him. He was ready to tear somebody up. Gary, not much better than this. But it's 59 absolute, headed to 70. Yeah, absolutely perfect down there for these guys to play. Should be a fun game to play and beautiful to watch. Our series history, it is all OU. They have won the 15 meetings, but beware, the Bears have played Oklahoma tough. You see what happened last year in a double OT in Norman. Oklahoma escaping 37-30, and their fans do travel well, as they say, as we get near the bowl season. You see Garrett Hartley, who is ready to tee it up. The junior out of Southlake, Texas, will kick it off, and Baylor 
We'll have Shelton deep for the return, along with Baker. Shelton at the 20, tries to break through and is brought down at the 22-yard line. Kia Sarah provides our starting lineups today, and we will lead things off with a redshirt freshman quarterback, Blake Szymanski. He struggled a bit against Oklahoma State, but did throw for 262 yards in the loss to the Cowboys last week. And just his third start after the injury to the record-setting Sean Bell. And Baylor has struggled overall, but it has not certainly been due to his part. He's played, for the most part, pretty well. well Blake Szymanski, he's got the ability to run the football as well as throw it. He's a big guy back there. He's 6'4". He's got good presence in the pocket. He gives them an opportunity to do some things offensively. All right, let's take a look at the Bears here as they line up first and 10 from the 22-yard line. And Szymanski, the spread offense complete to Mosley. Mosley to near the 25-yard line, and Kiyosero will give us the rest of the offensive starters here for the Baylor Bears. The offensive line, a couple of seniors playing their last game in first, as well as Blaylock up front. The backs and receivers, watch out for Ziegler and Shelton. Both have caught over 50 balls, the first Baylor duo to ever do that. And Mosley is also a senior who is more known as a running back in the old style, but he's been adaptable, as you just saw, to catching the football as well this season. Second down and eight. And this one is complete. Out on the flat to Thomas White. And White is stopped near the 30-yard line. We'll see where they mark it close to a first down. Let's take a Kia Sarah's starting lineup defensively now for the Oklahoma defense, one of the most improved in college football with Verdine and Thibodeau anchoring at the ends. Alexander, their leading tackler again with 82 coming in. Walker has come on like gangbusters, and Reggie Smith is a multi-talented performer, returns kicks as well as anchoring things in the secondary at the safety position. Yeah, that's one of the things here for Baylor to come out. I thought to be to establish the line of scrimmage here and get an early first down, get some consistency, get some momentum here at home. Not, not far into this ball game, but the last couple of weeks they haven't had any consistency offensively. First and 10 at the 32, and Mosley sheds a tackler or two. And he rolls for a first down out near the 48-yard line. And certainly Baylor needs something good to happen early after what happened the last couple of weeks to him here. Well, you see what Szymanski brings you, a good confidence back there in the quarterback. Gets back there in the pocket, reads the defense, got enough protection up front. He throws the ball out there comfortably, and then Paul Mosley get it with his second reception here on this ball game. He's a big bruising type of a tailback, but shown here early in the ball game, able to catch it out of the backfield. 16 yards on the pickup. Latimer's the one that bumped him out of bounds. And the pass is complete to Sims, and Sims is wrestled down near the line of scrimmage, may have picked up a yard. And let's take a look at some of the keys to victory, first of all, for the Baylor Bears. Well, for Baylor coming to this football game, I think they need to end each of their offense possessions with a kick. What I mean by that, PAT, field goal, or even a punt. A punt is a good situation to be in. Don't turn the ball over. They've got to slow down the OU run game somehow. Haven't done a very good job of stopping the run, and they've got to create their own opportunities here, here Bill. Cannot have bad things happen to them. They've got to force some turnovers with their defense. Pontiac Keys, and they had six turnovers last week against Oklahoma State in that 66-24 defeat. Here is Szymanski on second down and nine in trouble. And throws it over the OU bench. And now Pontiac with the Oklahoma Keys here today. Well, Oklahoma, well, what they need to do, offensive balance. They like to be balanced, throw the ball, run the ball, but I think they're going to try to run the football against this Baylor team. It's, it's a couple teams before them had a lot of success, and defensively just continue to do what they do, dominate the line of scrimmage with their defensive ends and linebackers, and they just need to play a complete, clean game, a complete game in all phases, and no penalties and no mistakes. And I think that Bob Stoops would like to see that with this football team here as they tune up for Oklahoma State coming up next week. Baylor, third and nine for the Bears coming up here. They're 40%, six in the league as far as third down conversion. Szymanski being chased. And incomplete. Giving him the heat was Lewis Baker was all over Szymanski, the junior out of Carrollton, Texas. And you certainly know with Oklahoma coming down here and so many Texans on their roster, they are fired up for this game, regardless of what Baylor's record is coming in. And then you throw in the additional possibilities of what could lay ahead for the Sooners, and you can understand how they're charged up today. That'll bring on the All-American, Daniel Sepulveda, punt it. Sepulveda tied for the top in the league. 
with Fodge from Oklahoma State. And he is punting at a clip of 46.5. Fair catch is called for and taken by Oklahoma. And they will operate first and 10 at the 14 yard line as Reggie Smith with the fair catch there. All right, Piacera with the starting lineups here on the other end now with Oklahoma and Paul Thompson, 61% passing percentage. And that are those are lofty numbers. And guys like Heupel and White are the only two to achieve that. As Thompson has really come into this, a senior from Leander, Texas, not too far from here. 15 touchdowns on the season with only six interceptions. Bill, 1,900 yards pass, and he can get to the 2,000 mark here today in this football game. First and 10. And... Not much doing there on the ground game, and we expect Oklahoma to run it here today. Let's take a look at the Kiyosera lineup for Oklahoma, and up front, the big fellas. It's a young group, three sophomores, a freshman, and then the senior, Messner, get the call for Bob Stoops today. And the backs and receivers, big playmaker, Malcolm Kelly, who caught 11 passes for 153 yards last week, and Chris Brown getting the start here today. Their fourth string tailback, if you will, he ran for 84 yards and two touchdowns in the Tech win. And the pass is complete to Iglesias, a sophomore out of Colleen, Texas. Let's take a look now at the Baylor defense here, brought to you by Tia Serra. Well, their defensive line's gonna have to play better than they have. This team has given up 152 points in the last three losses. And Pavelic, their freshman, is their leading tackler. The secondary, they've got a couple of shutdown guys. The seniors, Arline and Wilson, both are outstanding. Wilson with four interceptions on the year to pace it. Third down and three for Oklahoma. First possession for the Sooners, 11-14 to go. First quarter here in Waco. Thompson. Incomplete over the head of Malcolm Kelly, the sophomore from Longview, Texas, and the Sooners. A three and out, we'll have to punt it away. They have two different punters, a long and a short guy. And in this case, you would imagine they bring on Michael Cohen, the junior from Houston, six foot 205. He averages 41.2 yards per kick. In the shorter situations, they'll go with Mike Nall. This is Cohen. And Sims is the lone return man for Baylor. On Baylor with an opportunity, Bill, to get good field position here. Good job defensively stopping the Sooners on their opening drive. Sims averages 7.6 per return. Fair catch, and they get good field position on the exchange just across the 35-yard line. No score here in Waco between Baylor and Oklahoma. College football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kia Sarah, the new value frontier, and brought to you in part by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life by the horns, Dodge by Famous Bowls from KFC. Dig into great layers of flavor with KFC Famous Bowls. And by Dr. Pepper, 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. The Baylor Bears, yes, the live mascots. They've got comfy quarters for them on campus and icing them down here at Floyd Casey Stadium. Having a nice day out there today. I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful day. Seeing Here's a good football foot game here yeah. too. Let's see how Baylor handles its second possession. First and 10 from the 36-yard line. Hey. Szymanski's had good protection so far, and that one off the hands of Ziegler would have been a phenomenal one-handed grab. Dominique is fourth in the league in receptions, 52 coming in. Well, Dominique is a tremendous athlete, a great leaper, and they're going to try to throw the ball out there to him. Good protection up front for Szymanski to step up into the pocket and throw this football. It sails a little bit on him, trying to fit in there between the, the cornerback who's rolled up and the safety at the top there, Will Williams. Here's a look at the senior from Colleen. Ziegler, 716 yards, got three touchdowns. He had five grabs for 39 yards in the loss to OSU. Second down, and right across the middle, they find Sims. And Sims near the first down, short by a yard. They'll mark it at the 45. Reggie Smith, the strong safety, brought him down. Well, a couple of catches already for Carl Sims early in this ball game, getting him in the action. And good job of taking it underneath the linebacker level there, the OU defense, and bringing up a third short situation. Carl Sims. Just a sophomore, so he's going to be back for Guy Morris with his football team for a couple more seasons. Came in with 12 receptions, seven of them last week in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Third and one here for the Bears from the 45-yard line. Zemanski 
across the middle, looking and incomplete, intended for Sims once again. Well, he had a little clock going off in his head because I think he knew that uh, Calvin Thibodeau from the weak side was coming around the outside, and he's going to get actually get to Zemanski. Watch on the top of the screen here as Calvin Thibodeau comes around the edge and trying to get him gotten there just a little bit late. And, but still, he uh, has penalty thrown there on that, on that throw. So Sepulveda comes on for his second punt of the day. 40 or 37 yarder his first time. And again, a fair catch by Smith at the 15 yard line. So Sepulveda does his job on a 42 yarder. You're watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Sarah. We'll be right back. No score, Oklahoma and Baylor here in Waco, 9.46 to go in the first. Tomorrow will be there live for the first show that breaks down the new BCS standings, the official BCS ratings show exclusively on FSN. Find out who's moving up, who's moving out, and who's moving on towards a berth in a BCS bowl game. It's presented by KFC tomorrow at 9.30 p.m. only on FSN. Whatever your opinions of the BCS, you'll have to say it's interesting <laughs> as it unfolds each week. And take a look at the KFC Famous Bulls BCS rankings with Ohio State and Michigan 1 and 2. And of course, they meet later on today. You see USC, Florida, Notre Dame, Rutgers still unbeaten. There's still a lot to go in college football as far as that is concerned. Oklahoma throws and completes for no gain on this first down situation. Now for Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to Michael Eaves. Still thanks a lot. You know, if number four Florida wins out, they could climb up those BCS rankings and play for a national championship, taking on one double A Western Carolina. Deshaun win thanks to a juke and a jump of 27 yards. Florida leads it early, 7-0. Bill, Gary, back you guys. Thank you, Michael. The Gators still in that hunt for that national championship game. Second down and 10 for Oklahoma. And they run the football up to the 19, make it the 20-yard line here. Well, Bill, one of the things in this football game I think for Baylor they need to do is bring their safeties down closer to the line of scrimmage. They play a lot of two deep safeties and a lot of what they call combo coverage on the outside. And they're going to have to bring those safeties down to account for the running game here for Oklahoma. And early on here doing a decent job again about stopping Oklahoma on their first and second down plays. Third down and five after Brown's run on second down. Ball on the 20-yard line. Thompson. Complete to Kelly, and that will move the chains out to the 35-yard line. Malcolm Kelly, their leading receiver. Well, Paul Thompson shows that he's got arm strength. He's got a couple of receivers in front of him here. He's going to move out of the pocket, and the receiver's going to come across the field here. First, you're going to have your tight end coming across this way, and Kelly's going to go to the outside, and Nice, easy throw that time to Malcolm Kelly on the sideline. These Baylor defenders need to get a little closer to Malcolm Kelly. Or he's going to make a lot of plays today for, for Oklahoma. 15 yards in the pickup. One of the things they really like about Paul Thompson is decision-making and doesn't put him in bad plays. Put that one on the spot to Kelly. Here is Brown, 45, 50, 45 of Baylor, and rolled out of bounds on the Baylor sideline near the 38-yard line. Chris Brown, 84 yards and two scores last weekend, and he gets 26 yards here. Well, if you didn't know much about Chris Brown until last weekend, he came into that football game against Texas Tech and did this. He broke tackles. He got through the line of scrimmage and broke into the secondary. He's doing the same thing here against Baylor. Hard guy to bring down. He's shown that he's got a little bit of a ability to make people miss. And take a look at uh, Chris Brown playing that football game last week against Texas Tech, and you see the tackles that he broke there en route to a touchdown. So Chris Brown shown that he can get it done on the ground. First to 10 at the 38. And Thompson brought down the 37 yard line by Jason Lamb, Richard freshman from Richardson Berkner High School in Texas. And let's send it down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Directly to behind me, number 23, Alan Patrick, the Oklahoma running back. Uh, told me last week had a hurt ankle, but he said he would be back for today's game against Baylor. As you can see, he is in uniform, but not playing. But he did say he could probably pay today if needed. It looks like right now Chris Brown doing most of the damage. Well, Jim, he practiced this week a little bit for Bob Stoops' football team, but he didn't do it extensively. And I watched him in the warm-ups today, and he was very ginger still on that ankle. I'd, I'd really be, be, be surprised if he were to play at all this football game as we take a look at Corey Ford coming off the field here for Baylor. 
But, you know, that's the thing about Oklahoma, Bill. They're, t- they're running back position. They're deep. You know, you know you've got Adrian Peterson out, and Alan Patrick out of the ball game. Gutierrez got the start uh, last week, and now Brown getting the start this week. So they've got some depth there at that tailback spot. And we take a look at Adrian Peterson on the sideline. Well, and all the talk, as you can imagine, up in Oklahoma, not just Patrick, but Peterson, and will he be able to go against Oklahoma State? That'll be the time that he was scheduled to be back, but no one knows until they x-ray his collarbone to see if he's ready to go and then how he feels. And uh, people at a fever pitch, though, concerning that. Oklahoma keeps it on the ground here. And speaking of Adrian Peterson, there's what's at stake if he's able to return. Most certainly would think that he'll move on to the NFL after this year, whether he plays another game or not for the Sooners. And you see where he ranks in their all-time leading rushers behind guys like Sims, Washington, and Owens. Yeah, just he's 150 yards or so to be the all-time leading rusher for the Sooners. So I think that if he's able to play next week against Oklahoma State, that he would actually get out there and play. He's a competitor. He's a guy that wants to be on the field for his football team. But uh, haven't had a late x-ray yet, so they really don't know whether he's going to be available to Bob Stoops' football team or not. Kelly, a sensational grab as that ball from Thompson a bit behind him. He reaches back and snatches it and is stopped at the 21-yard line. Picks up a dozen yards. Well, sometimes receivers can make quarterbacks look a little better than they really are. This isn't really a bad throw by Paul Thompson, but one certainly behind Malcolm Kelly. Kelly's on the outside here, going to do a two-level slant. Two receivers going inside, and watch that hand. Grab that football, pull it in. Good job of holding on to it. Never even got his left hand to tackle. Wayne Crawford, who's been battling a knee injury, made the stop on the play. Oklahoma. Impressive drive here, trying to march in for their first score of the day. And Brown again with the carry to the 15 before Alton Weidman makes the tackle. Well, Bill, most impressive as much as what Paul Thompson has done this year, I think that offensive line, really a young group up there. Only number 79, Chris Mester, the only senior on that offensive line. And they have grown up and they've grown up together. And they've really gotten more consistent play out of that offensive front than and probably perhaps Bob Stoops really thought that he would with this young group. And they, they've done a pretty good job. Obviously, the running game has worked very well for Oklahoma. Pretty good hole there. Baylor closes quickly, but Brown rushes to the 10-yard line. And on they will move the chains. And more, yeah, more about the Oklahoma offense. In the, in the red zone, they have done a great job so far in this football season. See the numbers that they put up here in the last six weeks or the Big 12 play, 100% success, success rate down there. So that's what you need to do. Put the put points on the board when you get in the red zone, and Oklahoma's done a good job of that in Big 12 play. 95% overall the conference play. They have just been outstanding. And Oklahoma's current drive, 415. It's gone 75 yards, and it's a first down. Okay, okay, okay. End zone. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Joe John Finley on the reception. Sooners score first. Well, you're not going to see a better throwing football than this from Paul Thompson. Paul Thompson very, very comfortably throws that ball to Joe John Finley, his tight end coming out there on the outside. And Joe John Finley's going to run the little wheel wrap to come up here to the top of the screen. And good job by Paul Thompson just delivering that ball out there to him over the coverage defender and in front of C.J. Wilson. Excellent throw. And that'll bring on Garrett Hartley for the point after attempt. He's 35 of 35. And coming out of there, they're going to have to throw it now. And it is incomplete. Just off the fingertips in the end zone of Finley for what would have been a two-point conversion. A flag is thrown. And holder on the play, Hayes McEachran. The one that threw the pass. Did you understand that? Well, ineligible <laughs> receiver downfield yeah. is what it was. It's an, you see the bobbled snap there, not able to put the ball on the ground and trying to make something out of it here. Two-point conversion here goes awry for the Sooners. And it's 6-0 Oklahoma here in the first. Oklahoma strikes first, and when they've done that, they've been unbeaten this year. Six times they've been out front on the scoreboard first, and our Dodge scoring drive, 10 plays, 85 yards. Finley gets the TD reception, and for Finley, that is his third TD grab of the season. He had one catch for eight yards in the win over Texas Tech last week. Kick failed, and here comes the kickoff. And 
Baker will bring it out. Stumbles after being tripped up near the 10 and falls to the 14. Let's go back and look at that Oklahoma touchdown pass, Thompson to Finley. Well, Jojon Finley starts on the near sideline and he moves across the line of scrimmage. And Alton Weidman, the defensive back, actually be playing linebacker for Baylor number 20 on this play, has coverage on him. He's a much shorter player. You got a 6'6 receiver and Jojon Finley going up against Weidman, who's only 5'11. A great throw by Paul Thompson. Thompson's 16th touchdown pass of the year. And I think Gary mentioned earlier only six interceptions for Thompson. And the Sooners and Finley lead it 6 0. Let's see how Baylor answers or if they do. First and 10 on the 14. Okay. Mosley, nothing. Maybe a loss on the play. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com, where you'll find thousands of brand name products and savings of up to 70% every day of the week. Overstock. Dot com. Yeah, and you see that linebacker play, Rufus Alexander coming up, making a, a tackle for a loss. It's nine and a half now for Rufus on the season. He's a playmaker for the Sooner defense. Senior out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, first team all-conference pick a year ago and headed for similar honors this year. Second down and 11 after a loss of one, and it is picked off by Smith in the secondary, the 30, the 25, the 20. Reggie Smith to the 10. He scores! Touchdown, Oklahoma! That's how Oklahoma answers its first score. Well, Reggie Smith does a good job in the secondary for him, and he just playing center field for, for this Oklahoma football team, and he's a playmaker. He's their punt returner for the Sooners as well, so when he gets the ball in his hands, he knows he's going to have a chance to, to get something. Here's a Reggie right here. He's just going to come in the middle field and play center field, look for that football, which is a little bit underthrown, and he makes a nice break and undercut on the ball, and then he knows how to get it to the end zone. Reggie Smith, a dual-purpose player for this Oklahoma football team, and Knows how to make big plays. 42 yards on the interception return, and here's Hartley. And this one, no problem on the snap and the kick as well. And Oklahoma puts up seven more on the interception by Smith. Now Blake Zemanski just underthrows his football, and he doesn't really account for Reggie Smith out there. And that's the problem that you have. You got a talented defense and a young freshman quarterback, and he's looking all the way down the middle of the field here. He's trying to run it straight down the middle of the field, but Great break by Reggie Smith. Undercut on that throw. Blake Zemanski's going to look back at this tape and say, hey, I got to account for both safeties in this scheme, and he didn't pick up Reggie Smith. Smith, the sophomore from Edmond, Oklahoma, returns punts, returns kicks, came in with 28 tackles, have broken up four passes, and those turnovers have certainly been a big part of the OU defense in the successful years under Bob Stoops. You know, I talked to Bob about uh, about Reggie Smith this week and asked him, so, you know, he's had a sore knee. He's had some knee problems and really hasn't been a, been a full go situation for Reggie Smith. But looking at him on that play, he's about as close to 100% as he's been all season. And that'll be important for them as they continue the rest of this season, especially next weekend with Oklahoma State. A game that the uh, Sooners would dearly like to win, that, that Bedlam rivalry. Well, that's his first pick this year. He had two last season when he was a freshman All-American. Had a fumble recovery in the Baylor game that Oklahoma won in double overtime last year. So, deja vu all over again. Now, Yogi is Oklahoma kicks it off again, and Baker, a yard deep out of the end zone, brings it out again. And he is stopped about the same place. Just shy of the 16-yard line, it appears, as Demario Pleasant, a junior out of Louisville, Texas, makes the tackle. And Baylor come back out with Szymanski and crew. Well, Bill, I talked about Baylor offensively ending every possession with a kick. That's either with a PAT, a field goal, or even a punt. When you do the turnovers, the things that happen to them, particularly on that last play with Rick Smith throwing the ball in, last week against Oklahoma State, starting the third quarter, two defensive touchdowns for Oklahoma State to start the third quarter. Some turnover problems. Bay Baylor cannot afford to do th that against a very talented Oklahoma football team. Well, it ended with a kick. Oklahoma's extra point. <laughs> certainly the wrong team. Taking it to the nth degree there. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that has certainly been a problem. And, and the Baylor coach is talking this week that Come on, team, they had to have me. ball security. Well, that's not just fumbles. That's also being able to throw one away. And, and Smith certainly turns this game right around. And now Baylor in a hole. Well, they try to throw it up top, throw it up top, and, and make a big play. Just the ball is a little bit short. Oklahoma made a good play on it, but Baylor has moved the ball. They've got a couple first downs this ball game against this Oklahoma defense. Maybe they need to stay down a little more to shorter throwing attack in the run game. Second down and six now. 
the man's been trying to weave it through one of the on-rushing linemen. And looking for Jacoby Jones on that play. And just the outlet pass there for Zemanski. You get a little pressure in his face, so probably having to throw that football a little bit more than earlier than he would like to. I talked about Oklahoma's defensive front seven just to be dominant in the line of scrimmage in this football game. And you got to think, you got a freshman quarterback back there. You want to put pressure on him. Third down and six. Zemanski coming in. Had thrown for 501 yards, five interceptions, and four touchdowns. His six INT a moment ago. Okay. Zemanski lost this one up, and Smith is the nearest man to it. Nearly made a circus grab going back. Now, Reggie Smith, I was watching him the entire play, and he saw the little pump fake that Blake Zemanski did early on that play, and he didn't even bite on it. He just stayed back at the top of his defensive position, and he was the only one going to be able to make that play. So good job by Reggie Smith staying home and not, not allowing even a, any one of the Baylor players to get to that football. We're going to bring on a chance for Dennis Sepulveda, hopefully for Guy Morris to flip the field, and he has the ability to do it, Bill. He's got the big leg. And you see those numbers that he's put up over his career. One time Ray Guy winner and having a great shot of winning again. Smith, his interception for a touchdown a moment ago. He had 28 interceptions in his high school career at Edmond, Oklahoma. May have a chance to return here. Oh, he fumbles it and it's picked up by Baylor at the 20, the 15. And Baylor gets advantage of a turnover as the Bears pick it off. It is Davis coming up with the fumble recovery and the return. Braylon Davis. A junior from Dallas Carter High School, 5'11", 190. Well, a tre tremendous punt by Sepulveda to back Reggie Smith up. And as he's stepping back, I think he kind of loses focus on the ball because the ball's going to hit his... Looks like his shoulder pads right under his neck there, and it bounces up. And good job by Baylor picking up that football. And this is the opportunity type of play that you want in this football game if you're Baylor. Create opportunities and, you know, take care of miscues and mistakes by by Oklahoma. Now they've got good field position here. They've got to come away with points after this turnover. Well, OU last week had, what, four turnovers and three, I think, that led directly to touchdowns for Tech. And Bob Stoops was just shaking his head, couldn't believe his team was able to overcome that and win. Today, Baylor a chance to try to get right back in it here. First and 10 at the 24. Mosley. And Mosley powers his way. Finally pushed back, but they'll stop him officially near the 20-yard line. Well, Justin Fenty, he's actually a wide receiver for Baylor, trying to block on that play. Paul Mosley just runs right over him on that play at the end of it. Instead of trying to run away from him, Fenty's out, Fenty's out there trying to block, and Paul Mosley says, hey, get out of my way, man. I'm going north and south here. Final Mosley, game. Big bruiser, yeah. yeah, Mosley won the all. Senior out of Austin and of Anderson High School. Here's Baylor's red zone success this year with 35 opportunities and 30 scores. It is second down and six. Zemanski in trouble again and throws it away. Had Shelton out there, but got under time by Bennett. Corey Bennett, a sophomore from San Antonio. Well, this, this area of the field here in the red area, you're going to have your receivers going to get a lot tighter coverage by the Sooner secondary and doing a good job here early in this ball game of not allowing these Baylor receivers to run around with space and be able to allow Zemanski to find them. So he's thrown several balls away out of bounds because it's just been great coverage in the secondary by the Sooners. Szymanski, 4-12 for 35 yards. Had one picked off that was returned for a TD. It's third and six here with the 20 of Oklahoma. Szymanski in trouble again. Got away from a man. That was Burdine, and then unloads the football. Wow. Larry Burdine, a senior from Lawton, Oklahoma, thought he had his fourth sack of the season. Well, a little zone blitz here. You're going to have three defenders rushing the three down line, and you're going to bring two Rook defender from the weak side, and that's what's going to be the problem here for Baylor. And then Burdine really overpowers the offensive lineman and just does a good job getting back here. Just can't make the play on Zemanski. Good job eluding that pressure. And now you have a chance to at least put some points on the board here with a possible field goal attempt. And Larry Burdine's done a great job for the Sooner team. He leads the team in, with sacks with just three on a year. Not a great amount of sacks for this OU defense this year, Bill. Just 14 coming into this football game. And not a guy that is uh, afraid to speak his piece, although he wasn't allowed to visit with the media this week. Last week, uh, he made a little noise up there in Norman as they got ready to play Texas Tech. And folks uh, might remember that uh, Oklahoma felt that uh, they got the roar of a deal last year at Tech on some replay situation at the end of the game. And uh, Burdine's comment was, we got screwed at Texas Tech. Yeah, take, a, take a look here, Darian <laughs> Williams. Stoops said, well, we don't need to hear any more from Larry. <laughs> Darian Williams here on the, side, on, the, on the field. They're taking a look at him. Looks like something along his right leg there. 
Aaron Williams, junior out of Mesquite North High School in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And Oklahoma, like they need more injuries with what they've been through this year. Yeah, but really important here for Baylor in this football game. You've got a turnover. You've got a situation where you've got great field position. You don't put points on the board with a touchdown, but possibly you can put points on the board with a field goal here. So I think a very important play here for Baylor to kind of stay in this football game. All right, let's see what they come up with on fourth down and six. As the kicker, Ryan Havens, a senior from Odessa, Texas, he's 10 of 13 on the year. His longest is a 47-yarder. This from 37, and it is good. And Baylor gets on the board. Well, Braylon Davis does it all for the kick coverage team, picks up the mishandled punt return by Reggie Smith, and going to turn that into points. Good job by Baylor putting three points on the board. Makes it 13-3. Our college football quadruple header continues later today. Most of you will be seeing Kansas State take on Kansas. The Sunflower Battle, followed by Washington against Washington State, and then UCLA and Arizona State. Our college football coverage continues after our game right here on FSN. Kansas State, are they juiced after their big win against Texas last week? And Ian Campbell, a huge part of that one as they now move on to play KU and Lawrence today. Can anybody say quarterback at KSU? Woo, Freeman. Josh Freeman doing a good job playing last week against Texas and a big reason for the future for Kansas State. And I think there's gonna be a lot of guys in the, in the Big 12 next year. A lot of youth grew up quite a bit this year, especially the quarterback spot. And that Big 12 North is decided. Nebraska has clinched it and moved on, or will move on, of course, following their game with Colorado. They are in for the Big 12 championship game at 5-2. and two. Kansas State bowl eligible, Missouri as well. Kansas needs a win today to become bowl eligible. Colorado and Iowa State are playing out the string and uh, certainly uh, took the cap to Dan McCarney, coaching his final game for Iowa State against Missouri after uh, resigning a few weeks ago, good at the end of the season. What a class guy and done a terrific job up there. He will be difficult to replace, believe me. Kickoff will be down in the end zone, bring it out on the 20 for Oklahoma. And now for Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to Michael Lee. All right, Bill, thanks a lot. This is a great sight. Joe Paterno back at the game, not on the sidelines. He's viewing the game from the press box. Penn State taking on Michigan State. Brian Warrior here for the Spartans looking to run. No, he's looking to throw to Kerry Reed in the back of the end zone. Michigan State lends it. Leaves it 10 zip in the second. All right, thank you, Michael. Yeah, good to see uh, Joe back in the stadium at least, but not on the sideline. Sooners first and 10 at the 20. Okay. Thompson comes out throwing. It is incomplete intended for Dane Zaslaw, junior from Edmond, Oklahoma. A nice couple, of, couple of balls now just sailing a little bit for Paul Thompson. Today's broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting U.S. Armed Forces, serving in 176 countries and abroad, abroad rather, sea, ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq, Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. Welcome, and again, thank you for your service to our country. A lot of Sooner fans out there in the Armed Forces, no doubt yeah. about it. A lot of Sooner fans right here today made the trip from okay. there. Kelly, forward motion is stopped at the 25, maybe the 26-yard line, and stopped by C.J. Wilson. Let's send it down to Jim Knox. All right, Bill, a couple of injury reports for you guys. Corey Ford, fine defensive tackle for Baylor, went down a couple series ago with a right knee injury. They taped it up. He should be back. Also, Darius... Williams right now on the training table for Oklahoma. They're looking at his right knee as well. He doesn't look like he's in a great deal of pain. It looks like he will return as well, guys. All right, thanks, Jim, for keeping us abreast of that situation. Third and four here. See the Baylor defense tied to the line of scrimmage here, trying to hold this OU, slow down this OU running game, but he's got to come up a little tighter than that on a third and short situation and make tackles in the alley. Not able to do so on that play. OU's going to get that first down. Chris Brown, his seventh carry of the day. He's over the 50-yard mark now with the final minute of play here in the first quarter. You know, last year, it was another backup running back, Jacob Gutierrez, junior from San Antonio, who torched Baylor for 173 yards on 30 carries and two TDs. Brown off to a terrific start here with Peterson and Patrick sideline today. First and 10. Okay, Thompson. Okay, okay. 
Oh, mama, what a grab by Kelly. And he fumbled the football at the five-yard line. Baylor recovers it. Incredible. Crawford with the fumble recovery. Well, well, great job, first of all, by Malcolm Kelly catching his football on the outside. Paul Thompson throws it up there. Malcolm Kelly says, hey, I'm going to go get this football on the outside. You've got James Todd there in coverage. Look at him go up for the football, make a nice grab, but he looks like he's going to run, but Maurice Lindquist, he's the one actually gets the ball out, actually just drops it. Paul Kelly just drops the football, and great job that time coming up with it for this Dwayne Crawford for the Bears. 58 yards before the fumble, and Oklahoma, again, problems handling the football. So that has not been a strength for either team. Oklahoma ninth in the league in turnover margin. Baylor last coming in, and both have given up points because of it here today. And now Mosley catches it. He goes to the 10-yard line as Zemanski thrown out of his own end zone. Wow, what a turnaround. What looked to be a Kelly touchdown. And Baylor ends up getting the ball back as we end the first quarter here in Waco. It is 13-3 Oklahoma. And the Sooners and the Bears, a wild one in Waco. We will return after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bobber. It's Oklahoma 13, Baylor 3 on Kia Sarah College Football Saturday from the Big 12 in Waco. But following a turnover, Baylor will start the second quarter with a second down and six, the Bears, on their own 10-yard line. Szymanski in trouble and tries to come up the middle. And there's nothing doing there as he is grabbed by Demarcus Granger, a redshirt freshman out of Dallas Kimball. They'll bring it five there on the Baylor Bear defense that time with a little zone blitz and Granger gets off the block and Szymanski just trying to get something positive there, not make a negative play. Looks like he picked up maybe one yard there for, for Guy Morris and bring up a third and five or six situation here for him. Well, Oklahoma has just 11 seniors here today while Baylor honoring 32. It just gives you an idea of what the Sooners have got coming back for next year as they roll in here eight and two and having won five in a row. The young football team getting better every week. And a timeout is called by Szymanski as he saw something that confused him a bit. They'll talk it over. We'll take a break as well from Waco with the Sooners leading at 13-3. Oklahoma leading Baylor in the Big 12, 13-3 here in the second. Next week, college football Saturday returns with a doubleheader. It's the Sooners against Oklahoma State. It's Bedlam in high definition from Stillwater. Then Arizona State will take on Arizona. All begins with the College Football Saturday kickoff show presented by Kyocera. It's like Saturday, 2 Eastern, 11 Pacific, only on FSN. Here's what the South looks like as Texas trying to wrap it up, but Oklahoma may have something to say about it. Sooners need to win here, win next week, and have Texas lose to A&M to win the South since they lost to Texas in the meeting this year at the Cotton Bowl. That ball is caught by Baylor out at the 24-yard line. Let's see who they marked it down. And that'll be a first down after going 0 for 4 on third downs. Trey Payne makes the reception here. Oh, nice grab by Trey Payne, controlling the football with both hands. I don't think there's any question or not whether or not that actually touched the ground. He did a good job of holding on to it. And ball kind of a strike that time by Zemanski. Payne picks up 11 yards on his first reception of the day, 15th of the year. A little look in, and that one is knocked away. Intended for Sims, Reggie Smith and crew were there. Oh. We're talking about this Oklahoma defense, and what do you do with a young quarterback? Well, you bring pressure, and that's what Oklahoma's doing here. You've got the zone read, zone blitz coming. You see Latimer coming inside. Good job of getting there. Good block, and almost another interception by Reggie Smith. Well, a similar offense they saw last week from Texas Tech, and, of course, they've been doing it for years with Mike Leach. They held them to 281 yards of offense, 175 below their average. And here's Baylor now, the second and 10. Big hit at the 19-yard line. Oh, you fans like that. 
Williams. That was C.J. Ayu. Well, Ayu does a great job of getting off the block. Here's Ayu right on the center. He's going to come down the line of scrimmage after he gets off the block. Get off the block, get up in the hole, and bingo. That's a tackle for loss. Price is feeling it. And it's third and 12 now. They're one of five in third downs today. Szymanski, 6 of 16 for 50 yards. Finally got some time and going deep and incomplete intended for Trent Shelton. Again, Reggie Smith back there step for step. Well, I think that this quarterback, Blake Zemanski, has seen a lot of pressures that he really hasn't seen in his young career. Brent Venables, a defensive coordinator, bringer from all over the field. He got his own blitz again this time. And good job of getting pressure on the quarterback. Baker that time puts a good shot on him and brings out Sepulveda once again. Reggie Smith is the deep man as Sepulveda comes on to punt for the fourth time today. He's averaged 44 yards per kick. Boots this one standing at his own seven. Smith with the 32, step back, now steps up. Got a block, 45, 50. And Smith with a flag thrown goes to near the 40 yard line of Baylor. So Povita is the one that actually made the stop. There you see him, former linebacker. And I think the late flag here at the end of play might be against uh, Baylor on this. Possibly a face mask infraction. It's a 49-yard punt, 26 on the return if it would stand. Yeah, there were no blockers out there. I don't think there's a penalty on, on, on the kick return team. And Bob Stoops very much involved in his special teams with his football team. Reggie Smith kind of redeeming himself from the last drop that he had and allowed better to put three points on the board. 12.57 to go in the first half as they conference and try to sort it out here. Reggie Smith had already returned an interception for a touchdown today. He's been involved in a lot of things. He fumbled a punt that led to a Baylor field goal. Sorry for the uh, technical difficulties. They, uh, issue with the microphone and the official. Well, I'm not sure exactly what the penalty was. I think it was probably they had holding at the line of scrimmage on the punt return team, and then they also had a hold somewhere throughout the play. So going to go back to where actually the, the, the original foul occurred and mark it up 10 yards from there. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera Wireless. Take your texting to the next level with a new Kyocera Strobe. Kyocera Wireless reminds you to dial responsibly. Brought to you in part by Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com. Search, shop, and save up to 70% at Overstock.com. Waco, Texas, the scene is Oklahoma. Following that penalty sorted out, there was pass play here, and Iglesias makes the reception out at the 44-yard line. Let's see where they mark near the 45. Joaquin, and another flag is thrown here, this one back at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, we've got a penalty in the backfield. They're going to be holding, I think, here against Oklahoma. Holding against the Sooners. Well, it's a well-designed play, play-action pass, and bringing Iglesias all the way across the field underneath the linebackers. And Bob Stoops not going to get the benefit of that play. And surprising to throw in the ball a little bit more than I thought they would against his Baylor defense because the Baylor defense, Bill, over the last several weeks has had a tough time stopping the run. And very evidence with what's happened, particularly the last couple of weeks. And they're allowing on the year Baylor's run defense and given up 187 yards a game. Yeah, you can see the numbers here for Baylor has happened. 387 yards last week for OSU running the football. Averaging 6.23 yards per carry. It's uh, tough numbers to swallow for a defense coordinator. Yeah, and when Tech gets that number you just saw, a team that is predominantly going to throw the football, you know your run defense is suspect. Brown, who's had a nice start here today, and gets his eighth carry. He's got 60 yards on his eight carries, and Connor Redfern made the tackle junior out of Mount Pleasant, Texas. It's second down and 17 now. 
Ball on the 14-yard line. Guy Morris looks things over. Almost in his fourth year here at Baylor. It's been a frustrating year. Flag thrown. Thompson complete. Iglesias fumbled. Picked it right back up, though. And stayed in bounds as well. But the flag will stop play with 11.47 to go. Weidman making the tackle. Now they're calling it incomplete here, Bill, at the end of the play. For the ruling there was... Yeah, it looked like double dribble. <laughs> I kind of like that, yeah. <laughs> Had in his hands down, pick it back up. That's a violation, too. Offside, defense, double dive, five-yard penalty, second down. There you go. Got the Mike Calvin stretch now. there. No Oklahoma on the year has been averaging just over five and a half penalties a game for 40 yards a game. Bob Stoops, 83 and 18 in this eighth year. And still some big things ahead possibly for this football team, depending on this whole crazy finish of college football this year. Yeah, talking to Joe Castiglione before the game, he says all the bowls are out there in front of them except for perhaps the national championship game. So anything could really happen for the Sooners in postseason. Chris Brown takes it straight forward on a second down and nine. And down to the 23-yard line. The Oklahoma fumbles have certainly been costly here today. Well, Reggie Smith drops one here on a punt return and picked up by Braylon Davis and gives him great field position. They resulted three points after that. And then Malcolm Kelly looks like he's going to go for the score, and he just drops the football. And Dwayne Crawford comes up with it for the Bears once again. So a couple of turnovers in this football game and one opportunity for the Bears to put points on the board, and they do. Third and eight, ball on the 19 now. Quarterback Thompson. And he completes it for a big hit there on the Oklahoma sideline. Eldridge, the receiver, and Anthony Arline delivering the blow. Eldridge, a redshirt freshman out of Kansas, his third reception of the season. Well, a good job this time by the defense. Eldridge is going to be in the slot here and work to the outside, and it's going to toss the ball out there to him. And a couple of Baylor defenders coming up with a good, good form time. One high, one low. Sims will be back for the kick. As coming on for the punt is Michael Cohen. There is Sims. Cohen, the junior out of Houston. He stands inside his own 15. Good snap. And Sims goes way back, takes an OU roll, maybe too much, and it goes into the end zone. Wow. Nearly had a chance to down it inside the five. 72 yards, comes back out to the 20. We'll be right back on FSN. Welcome back. Just missed an incompletion here with 9.59 to go in the second quarter. It's Oklahoma with a 13-3 lead over Baylor. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox, the FSN crew with you here as the Sooners today, 178 yards of offense. Baylor just 56 so far. Just 56 yards of offense. Not surprising. Blades Demanche, he's had a lot of pressure on him. 6 of 18 here. His number is not very good in this football game. And Brent Venables, the defense coordinator for Oklahoma, bringing a lot of different pressures against his quarterback. They average 331 a game total offense. And the little pitch here. Nothing doing for Mosley. He stopped at the 19-yard line. The IU does a good job again on the outside, a lot not allowing Mosley to take that shovel pass from, from his quarterback around the corner. A lot of Sooner fans here today, Bill, and they, they've kind of come in droves down here to Waco and enjoying a great day of football. As Oklahoma, talking about bowls, and Joe Castiglione, the athletic director, yeah, Rose, that's a possibility. Orange, yeah, Gator, Cotton. <laughs> It just becomes endless conversation until things finally sort themselves out. Third down and 11. Szymanski and a drilled pass across the middle out to the 40-yard line. Thomas White, a nice catch going up to get it. And that'll move the chains for Baylor. Well, they hold out the rush just long enough here for Zemanski to throw the football, a little twist inside coming around. Nobody gets to him, so he's able to get the ball out there to Wide, who makes a nice grab going up for it. 
White, a guy walked on in 04, just one play in 05, and this year coming into this game with 23 receptions and has scored a couple of touchdowns. Had five receptions in the Tech contest, and the handoff to Mosley. Tries to kick it to the outside, but that OU defense stays right, right with him. Jason Carter is there, and a flag is thrown. Stops the clock, 8.48 to go second quarter. Looks like a call a penalty on Nick Harris on the defense, number five. Sophomore out of Alexandria, Louisiana, picks up the foul, and that'll add to Baylor's cause here. You know, Gary Baylor's sitting in a situation. We just gave the stats. They're, Oklahoma's controlling the game, but those fumbles we showed have given Baylor at least put the door open. They take one in and score here. We got a game. Yeah, you got a good football game going. If they can put points on the board, and Take advantage of this good field position. You have a penalty there against Oklahoma, going to give you 15 yards. So first down and plenty of room here to, to work with. From the 45, and Szymanski throws the screen to Price, and Price tackled from behind at the 41-yard line of Oklahoma. Picks up around four. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com. Whether you order a big screen TV or a comfy leather chair, it all shops for two, or the ships, I should say, for $2.95. Shop and save at overstock.com. Yeah, we've seen Paul Mosley and Mario Price both in the backfield for Baylor. They're not able, they don't have their, their best back out of the backfield for this offense. It's Brandon Whitaker, a young man from Edmond, Oklahoma. He's been out several weeks and not be able to play today as well. Shelton in the end zone from Szymanski, and Shelton saying there was contact before the ball got there. Not happy at all, the senior out of Fort Worth, Texas, playing his final game. Well, I don't know if he's gonna get an attorney because he's not played this case well enough. Sees Zemanski throw the ball deep to the middle of the end zone and little incidental contact there. I don't think that Walker did anything really to stop him. I don't think he had his ball, they have his hand in the back of there. There's no official back there on that back line, but you see Walker going up trying to knock the ball away and he does. I think it's pretty good defensive play. Yeah, initially I could see Shelton's beef, but you watch the replay, it looked like Walker did a heck of a job of avoiding that serious contact. Makes it third down and five now. Szymanski going to run with the football. And he is hit short of the first down and still down, hit hard near the 38-yard line. Szymanski, who had run for 75 yards in previous games, with 35 carries, 2.1 average. It's not bad considering the sack situation. And another pressure situation here. Brent Venables bringing another corner blitz that time. And strangely, this Oklahoma defense, three of their four starting defensive backs will have a sack on the season. I think that's pretty impressive. The only one not does not have a sack is Reggie Smith. But both cornerbacks, Walker and Lindy Holmes, both have a sack as well as the free safety, Darian Williams. He's got a couple of sacks on the season. So Baylor they bring going, their defensive backs. Pardon me, Gary. Baylor going for it on fourth down. Fourth and three. And it is complete, but might be, I think, is short of the first down. The Price. Mark. They were three of seven in fourth down situations, and you can see he's upset. You know, Mario Price kind of lost his footing there. He easily would have had the first down if he'd have been able to continue just another yard or so. Blake Zemanski avoided the rush just enough to get the ball to Mario Price out of the backfield. And here he is here. He's going to come across and catch the football. Just kind of stumbles. He had nobody there. He just needed to get to that 35-yard line for the first down. And he rolled across it, but uh, it stopped just short. So the Bears. Turn it over on downs. First and 10, Oklahoma at the 36. And Gutierrez gets the carry. Jacob, a junior out of San Antonio Madison High School, came in averaging 4.9 per carry and 161 yards on the season. Yeah, he had a breakout game last year against his Baylor football team. 173 yards on the ground in that, in that effort. And young man getting a chance to play here again against his Baylor football team. 5'6", 187 pounds, scored 52 touchdowns in his glorious high school career where he ran for over 4,500 yards. 
And it's second down and seven after his pickup of three. A little change of pace from Brown. And he takes this one to the 42. Gary mentioned what he did last year against this Baylor bunch. Well, here's a look at it from a year ago. Well, he just got settled in here. And his quickness and his speed around the outside of this Baylor defense kind of gave them fits all night down in Norman. Jacob Gutierrez, he was the answer running the football for the Sooners that night. Game they had to come back and win, though, in overtime against his Baylor football team. But Gutierrez had a career night, one I'm sure he'll remember for a long time. Third and four, ball on the 42. Intercepted, our line, 45, 40, and taken down at the 38-yard line as Oklahoma turns it over. Thompson himself made the tackle, and they are charged up from the Baylor sideline. But one of the things I talked about as the keys for Baylor defensively is to create opportunities. And that's exactly what Anthony Arline does here. He's at the top of the screen. He's going to be here and come back underneath and get underneath this throw. Anthony Arline, the cornerback, just reading the corner of quarterback's eyes, trying to fit the ball out there to the outside, and he breaks underneath it. He's a big cornerback, too, Bill. He's 6'2", about 195 pounds. Good physical specimen back there at that cornerback spot. Well, that OU turnover situation comes up again. First and 10 at the 38. Szymanski comes out firing and takes it to Sims on this play. Now for Dr. Pepper game break, let's head to Michael Eaves. All right, Bill, thanks a lot. Let's go to the ACC. Number 19, Maryland taking on number 20, BC. Sam Howenbach drops it. Joe Lynn Dunbar picks it up and goes the distance. BC all over Maryland, 21 to three in the second quarter, Bill. Thanks, Michael. BC got it going right here. Baylor trying to get it going as Mosley a couple of tough yards to the 30 and just across there in Oklahoma territory. Well, important here again, I think, for Baylor, Bill. Off this turnover, you got great field position. You've got to just keep moving, moving the chains and inching it closer to that goal line. Boy, it'd be great for him to get a touchdown here to stay in this football game. And the Sooners, although dominating statistically, 184 to 90, they've doubled in the yardage. Scores just 13 to 3. Szymanski and knocked away. Got a deflection of Harris. Got a touch on it. Now a key fourth down here for Baylor. Probably going to go for it again, not try this field goal. It'll be a pretty long one, 46 yards or so, if they were to attempt this field goal from where the ball was spotted. be actually a 47-yard attempt, but uh, fourth down and two yards. Guy Morris selecting to go for it here on fourth down. Havens had hit a 37-yarder earlier today. Let's see what they come up with. Fourth and two. Mosley. Makes a tackle and looks like he's got it. Well, it all depends on the spot, Bill. The line judge on the far sideline steps up, and it's going to be very close. When he see where he steps there, yeah, looks that, like it's going to be right at the mark. And that first see the down line marker, there, and realize, there's the football. It is a. It's not on the field for him, folks. <laughs> the Paul Mosley, you're going to fake to the weak side here, the strong side, and Mosley coming out. Birdeye not able to catch up with him enough to get him just before the line. I'm going to measure out there for us. And it is a first down Baylor with 3.44 to go. We've had a scoreless second quarter. Baylor trying to do something about it here, taking advantage of an Oklahoma turnover. Our line interception, his second of the season here from San Antonio setting them up. And now, after going for it on fourth down, first and 10 at the 28 now for the Bears. First down the 28. Price in the backfield with Szymanski. He goes out. Now, Szymanski never knew what hit him. Hello, Dotson. Alonzo Dotson Jr. from Houston, Elite Hastings High School, and he flattens the redshirt freshman signal call. A little bit of confusion in the Baylor front up there. Number 91, Dotson just going to come around the edge, and he's going to get back to Zemanski very easily here. And 
Not a whole lot of pressure. Just does a slap and uppercut right through the gap there. The offensive tackle just flags him, doesn't get him. Jason Smith allowing him to continue right to the quarterback and nice, easy sack. Lost, pardon me, a loss of nine. It's second down and 19 now. Szymanski, a bad snap, dives on it. As they nearly turn it over and Baylor going the wrong direction. Loses eight on this. Wow, you don't want to backfire here if you're Baylor. You've got great field position opportunities, and this is just a poor snap to the outside, and quarterback Zemanski just having to dive on it to retain possession. That makes it third and 27. Baylor, the ball on the 45 of OU. Zemanski in trouble again, and he is sacked again. Oklahoma turning up the heat. IU comes through for the sack. And Sepulveda will punt it away. I talked about the line, the defensive front for Oklahoma being dominant in this football game, and looks like they're taking charge here, just knocking this Baylor offense all the way back to their own 42-yard line. Daniel Sepulveda, a guy who's able to flip the field, he's going to need to do so once again here. He's going to have a chance to trot out there once again. But they'll need every bit of this here as a 31 yards of loss on that drive. And we'll return after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper Bobber. Have any trouble hanging on to the football. Oklahoma with a 13-3 lead over Baylor here. Every week in college football, some rise, some fall, some take the next step on the road to the BCS. BCS breakdown on FSN, previews of Saturday's biggest matchups, and detailed analysis of the national championship picture. The BCS Breakdown Show. It's Friday at 6 p.m. only on FSN. The big one coming up later on from the Big Ten today, Ohio State and Michigan here at the Horrendous drive for Baylor. They punt it away, and Smith was tackled after another great punt from Sepulveda. He stopped on the 11-yard line. Let's send it down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Don't forget, college football fans, you can email us throughout today's game. We'll try to answer some of those emails in the second half. Email address, asknox at sbcglobal.net. That's asknox at sbcglobal.net. I think your mom recognizes you in that wig here. Oh, well, she might. It, it's natural. Let's see. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Look good on Jim, I think. <laughs> I don't think you're going to go there. <laughs> Blonde, having more fun. <laughs> First to Ted for Oklahoma now on the 11-yard line. We're inside the two-minute mark in a crazy second quarter here. Turnover filled. And Thompson, the throw, and then just keeps it, scampers out of bounds on the Baylor sideline. And you're getting that situation here, Gary, where Oklahoma said, all right, if we show some progress, we want to use our timeouts. If we don't, we want to move the clock, and then Baylor's sitting, all right, when do we want to start calling time? I think progress is the key word for the Sooners, depending upon what they do here. Second down and oh, seven or eight yards to go here. You've got to get something positive happen here. And you get a first down, I think they'll start managing the clock a little bit more efficiently, using some timeouts and doing some things to perhaps sustain this drive. Here's Thompson's work today through last week for 300 yards and his best effort of the, his career. Second down and seven. Thompson in trouble here, tries to go forward. Baylor tugging on him and brings him down at the 15-yard line. Julian Hill making the stop. That bring pressure from the outside and Julian Hill coming off the inside. Paul Thompson trying to run the huddle out there, trying to get things going and trying to slow things down now. Wanting time to eclipse off his clock. And Guy Morris realizing, all right, third and six, they stop him here. He'll probably call a timeout with a chance for some field position on a punt. But OU obviously letting that clock wind. And now they call a timeout as Bob Stoops was standing right over by the official to make sure he got it at the when he did. Well, Oklahoma, what a season has been for Bob Stoops and crew in August. 
Oh, it read Bomar and J.D. Quinn dismissed, well aware of that. Thompson, who'd been a wide receiver, comes back to the quarterback position. Team rallies behind him. We all know what happened in Oregon. And 34-33 with the controversy with the replay. Peterson breaks the collarbone. Then Patrick fills in great sprains his ankle. Yet OU sits here at 8-2. and two. And has it been easy for Bob Stoops to forget that Oregon game? Well, I, don't, I don't think they're going to forget about it, but Bob Stoops put it in perspective for us. It's hard for me to speak about it. Uh, everybody else understands the circumstances. Maybe they can speak about it. It never sounds right coming from me or from us. So, so in the end, sure, it's frustrating, but I'll leave it at that, and everybody else can make out what, of it what they will. Uh, you know, the, the situation, when it happened, I knew it would. And it's one of those situations that just, that just stays with you, unfortunately. I can appreciate Coach Stoops. He's not wanting to harp, he's not, but he's being very honest. You think about it. How can you not? Because that's all people talk about. And I think part of the problem, Gary, that I have with it is voters know what happened, but they look at OU as a two-loss team, and they're saying we need some consideration in that area. Well, and the BCS standings are going to reflect it as well. You've got Oklahoma down at 17, and they'd have been a one-loss team, Bill. They'd easily be in the top 10 and really in, in, the, in the driver's seat, perhaps a, a really top-tier bowl game, if not the national championship game. Third down and six. Thompson drills it to Iglesias. He's got the chains moving as he catches it out near the 30-yard line with 43 seconds to go. And let's see how you plays the, the clock situation here. Now kind of a call there offensively to go ahead and get that first down and keep things moving here. They're not being conservative. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of ticks went off that clock, though, getting to that, this decision here to go for it on third down, down the field. Going deep here and incomplete. Ended on the play for Quinton Cheney, 6'5", 2'8", a sophomore, Tulsa. You know, you see the athlete that Paul Thompson is and his ability to throw the football down the field. That was just a nice, easy throw that he threw about 60 yards. You know, just looked very easy, very comfortable back there. And he's got some skills as a quarterback. I don't know that he's going to get to play a, as, as a quarterback on Sundays, but you know what, if he has a chance to get to a camp and maybe learn the trade a little bit more, he might have a chance to play uh, a little bit of NFL football as a QB. Flag thrown here with 29 seconds to go. On the offense, five yard penalty, second down. You know, the athletic type of quarterback, Bill, they're the ones that are most coveted, I think, by, by teams these days. They like to get guys in there that are dual threat. Not that Paul Thompson is the biggest threat running the football, but he's got a pretty good command, command of this offense. And, Doing a good job leading it, makes good decisions. Yeah, I think those two things, leadership, good decisions, a guy who has good straightaway speed, not real elusive, but certainly inexperienced as you take a look from a professional standpoint, but who knows if he gets with the right team, gets a chance to spend a year or two on a reserve squad, maybe play in FL Europe. Well, this might be the last play of the quarter or the half here, so Oklahoma electing to run the football and Baylor not choosing to stop it. Looks like we're going to go into halftime here with uh, the Sooners comfortably in the lead. 13 to 3 as it winds down here with Oklahoma 202 yards of offense to Baylor's 65 in this first half. Let's send it down to Jim Knox and find out what Bob Stoops thinks. All right, thank you, Bill. Coach, you got to be pleased your defense so far has given up just 43 total yards, yet you can't hold on to the ball right now. Well, the big issue is penalties and turnovers, which, you know, we, we got to be able to take care of the ball and can't have foolish penalties put us behind the chains. All right, thank you, Coach. All right, thank you very much, Jim. The Sooners could have more, but they lead it by 10. Halftime score 13-3. Now let's join Michael Lees, Billy Ray Smith, and Marco Farr for our College Football Saturday Halftime Report. Welcome back to Kiosara College Football Saturday in Waco, Texas. Baylor and Oklahoma from the Big 12. The Sooners lead it 13-3 at the half. Bill Land, Gary Reasons with the up tap. And Gary, certainly the stats don't tell all the story because OU owns most of the numbers there. Well, Oklahoma's the only thing doing offensively. They've moved the ball down the field, but their miscues are allowing Baylor to stay in this football game. But overall, you take a look here, you see the numbers here overall in the first half. 
passing yard is pretty decent for Oklahoma. And they've ran the ball as well over 200 yards of total offense in the first half for Oklahoma. But the turnovers, the three turnovers, they got one interception by Paul Thompson and two miscues, dropping the football, a couple of fumbles that Baylor has taken advantage of with three points on the board. And the kickoff to Oklahoma. Iglesias at the 10, the 20, and brought down across the 25-yard line. And Oklahoma will have it first and 10 right there. Let's take a look at some of the first half highlights here today. As Oklahoma strike it first. Well, Paul Thompson hey, showing he can throw the ball effectively to Joe John Finley on his first opportunity. And then you have a play here intercepted by Reggie Smith, the strong safety for Oklahoma. Does a great job on the run back here and gets the ball into the end zone. With the miscues I talked about, certainly what's plagued the Sooners with the miscue on the fumble punt return there. And Malcolm Kelly dropping one as well, giving Baylor an opportunity to put uh, get their hands back on the football. And first and 10, Brown with the carry here for Oklahoma. Brown getting 72 yards rushing in the first half. And here's a look at the possessions for the Sooners the first time around. Yeah, you see the fumble there. And then the miscue on the punt, punt coverage. But the one touchdown and the fumble in the ball game here, really the keys, I think, for Oklahoma in this, in this first half. Second and six now after that pickup by Brown and the ball at the 29. Thompson wants to throw, got time. And complete again to Iglesias for a first down Oklahoma at the 39 yard line. Picks up 10. Remember our Pontiac keys of the game. First of all, for Oklahoma, let's revisit. Well, I thought they might be able to run the ball a little bit more, but you see them there, 15 rushes, 13 passes, electing to throw the football a little bit more in this game. The line of scrimmage, Oklahoma has dominated that on defense. A couple of sacks, they've hit the quarterback many times, and complete clean game, anything but for Oklahoma early on here. Four penalties and the three turnovers. Bob Stoops obviously not happy about that. First to 10 Sooners, and Thompson on the rollout now. A little pump thing. Keeps the football and moves forward to the 44, nearly the 45-yard line. And Joe Pavelic, the redshirt freshman out of Spring Branch, Texas, the leading tackler on this club, makes the stop. Our Oklahoma leaders in the first half, there's Thompson's numbers and Brown, very impressive. Kelly, good numbers, Gary, but he had the fumble. Yeah, the one fumble was huge. Chris Brown has done a pretty good job running the football for him. Their offense is moving the ball, Bill. It's not a problem of moving the ball. It's just converting when they have the football. You can't give it back to Baylor with the turnovers and expect to uh, you know, be up in this football game much more than you are. Brown breaks a couple, 45, 40. This is Brown to the 30 and rolls out of bounds on the 21-yard line. Chris Brown. Good job of picking a hole in the offensive line here. Chris Brown looks like he may be stopped at the line of scrimmage, but he gets through the hole here pretty well, and then he does a little sidestep here, just cut back against the green. There's one missed tackle right here in the middle of the screen, and that's not going to get him down, and, and he gets to the outside of the Baylor defense, and he's got enough speed to take this down for a significant game. 35 yards on the play for Brown, 5'10", 190, freshman from Alexandria, Louisiana, getting the start today thanks to his two touchdown effort against Texas Tech last week. First and 10. Thompson wants it, got it. Kelly, touchdown Oklahoma. Malcolm Kelly with his, with his eighth touchdown reception, 21 yards. Well, the old one-two punch there, one on the ground, one through the air. Good job by Oklahoma coming out, starting this second, excuse me, the third quarter. Paul Thompson throwing a strike here to Malcolm Kelly on a play action pass. He fakes it to the tailback, and Kelly coming around in the back of the end zone here, in the middle of the end zone. Nice, easy throw for Paul Thompson. And Oklahoma, just like that, slaps him early. 19 3, the point after for Hartley. And he knocks it through. So the Sooners, the flag thrown. The second touchdown of the pass of the day for Thompson. Offside, defense, 36, penalty is refused, try is good. Here's a look as we take it to a break with Oklahoma, the PAT 20 to three now, and Thompson's second touchdown pass of the day, this one to Kelly. College Football Saturday on FSN is presented by Kyocera, the new value frontier. 
and brought to you in part by Honda Motorcycles. Performance first. By Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. And by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. Bill Land, Gary Reasons, Jim Knox with you. The Sooners, a two-minute, 14-second drive, and they kick it off to Baylor at the 20 to 25, returning it for Baylor Keegan Van, a fullback out of Katy, Texas, and Baylor will operate at the 25-yard line. And Baylor first half possessions, not a pretty story. Well, the only good news there is a the field goal, and that came as a result of an OU gift, so to speak, uh, with the missed handle punt by Reggie Smith. But interceptions and punts is the only thing you're seeing in this football game for Baylor. In this first half, they have not had a lot of offensive production to speak of. They need to get that turned around, especially as they start here in the third quarter. Flag is thrown here before the pass to Sims is completed. Looks like we'll have a procedure penalty. 24, offense, five-yard penalty, first well, down. Our Pontiac keys to the game for Baylor we revisit. and Let's see how they're doing. Guy Morris looks on, not real happy. Well, I think you need to end the possessions with a kick and really the five punts and the one field goal, but the one interception that you had down the field and slow the OU run game, they really haven't done that very well. Only 5.5 yards per rush. You need to get that down to about three yards per rush if you're a decent defense and great opportunities. They have got the turnovers. That's the good thing for Baylor, but they just have not capitalized on all those situations. And it's first and 15 following the penalty against the Bears, and Szymanski is rocked again. I'll tell you what, the folks up front, and this time linebacker Rufus Alexander brings the chance of Rufus from the OU faithful. He blitzes through to get the sack. Well, another tackle for loss for Rufus Alexander, and that's nine and a half on the season. He gets in the backfield and makes plays and creates havoc. It's kind of a run blitz this time against Baylor on first down. They realize they're going to try to do some things, perhaps running the quarterback draw as they did. Rufus Alexander making a nice play. OU's defense leads the Big 12, allowing just under 250 yards a game. In the first half, Baylor 65 yards of total offense. And now they're going the wrong direction. They're 60 yards of offense. This one is complete to Dominique Ziegler, the senior from Colleen, Texas. Second down and 20. Picks up 15 on that play. As for statistical leaders in the first half for Baylor, See, Szymanski had the one pick. It was returned for a touchdown. Mosley, a lot of action, not a lot of yardage. And then White with a couple of grabs. Yeah, that's the first catch for Dominic Ziegler in this football game. He's a big play receiver. They need to get the ball in his hands. And I look for Trent Shelton as well. Both of those receivers coming into this, this football game with over 50 receptions for Baylor. Not an integral part of the football okay, game. Okay. Third and five, and there you go. Ziegler again. Catches it going out of bounds, and that gets Baylor a little juiced here as they'll move the chains, and he picks up 10 yards. Out of a two-level pattern there for Blake Zemanski to throw either short or deep, and he decides to go to the deeper one, which is going to be Dominic Ziegler, number seven, on the left side of your screen here. He's going to have one in the flat. He says, no, I can throw it up the field here for the first down. You see the two receivers there. There's Mario Price. And now first and 10 at the 40. Szymanski right across the middle to Jordan Adams, and Adams is tackled at the 45-yard line. He'd only had four receptions of the year coming in here. Well, another strong safety blitzer this time. You've got Carter from the uh, defensive side here for Oklahoma coming. Just going to do a flyby on Szymanski. Just after he throws the football, you'll see a number six flash across the screen. Bingo right there, but a good throw out there to get it to Jordan Adams and another first down here for Baylor. At the 44 of Oklahoma now, the first and 10 for the Bears. Flags again. Everybody pointing at Travis Farst, the senior. So they'll have to overcome the penalty again. Bill, Oklahoma's defense, they, they go with a four down line predominantly on most plays, but they, they jump around a lot. They'll have three down linemen as well, and they'll move, move those linebackers in and out. So they're changing things up here against this Baylor front. This time they're going to have four down linemen. The previous play they had three. So a lot of personnel coming in and out of the football game, and a lot of different looks here for Blake Zemanski. First and 15, Zemanski comes back in the passing game and completes it to David Geddes. 
Uh, Let's go down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Talking to Guy Morris, Baylor head coach at halftime. He said he was pretty pleased with the defense at the time, holding Oklahoma's offense just one touchdown. Meanwhile, he said his offense, they have to find a way not only get in the end zone, but to sustain drives. Right now, they're on one of those drives right now. All right, thank you. They come back to get us. He, gets it. he has made his first reception today. He had three catches last week, including a TD grab against Oklahoma State. He's a track star who taking a while to adjust coming out of prep school here, but getting some play late in the season now. And they again come back to Jones. Jacoby Jones goes to the 36-yard line. Well, nice little situation here for Blake Zemanski. He's finding these shorter receivers underneath, and looks like some adjustments have been made up front there for Baylor's offensive front, allowing Zemanski to throw the football. Yeah, he got sacked the one time here, but other than that, they protected pretty well, and they found a few soft spots here. Third and two now. 9.37 to go third quarter. It is 20-3 Oklahoma. Here they come, Zemanski. Better have eyes in the back of his head. Uh-oh, that is Thibodeau going the wrong way. He's back on his own 30-yard line. Throws it and pow at the 42-yard line. Intended for, well, Blake Zemanski, Bill, on this play, he's going to run about 75 yards. He's going to come out and get out of the pocket and come down here, and then he's going to wind his way back. Interesting here that he elects to retreat into his own 30-yard line. Wow. <laughs> Luckily, he doesn't make a bad play here. Gets out there, almost completes the ball to Paul Mosley. A little bit of a gain for a couple of yards. Well, actually, for a, for a loss of a couple. And a go for it on fourth and two at the 36 of Oklahoma. Intercepted, Reggie Smith. Smith at the 50. It's a foot race. He's at the 30. And he's dragged down near the 20-yard line. Justin Fente made the touchdown saving tackle as Reggie Smith, who took one to the house earlier this game, goes 52 yards this time. Well, just a miscommunication between receiver and quarterback, and Reggie Smith is just going to be sitting right there. He doesn't do a whole lot. He's just waiting on the throw and undercuts it right there. The receiver not even looking back for the football, and then it's just a foot race. Good job by Fente of tracking down Reggie Smith, who's, got, who's pretty speedy as well himself. With Justin Finney showing, hey, he's got some pretty pretty good wheels. So OU gets it about the point that Zemanski would have been tackled had he <laughs> got chased down down there. And here come the Sooners as they go on the ground, bringing it right back. And I mean, in mass, Brown carrying the football. Or Smith, that big return. Almost another touchdown. He's had quite a day, Gary. Yeah, he really has. He's done a good job. He kind of solidified his defense. When he moved from cornerback back to the strong safety spot, they felt like that that gave them the balance that they needed. Marcus Walker and Lindy Holm playing well at cornerback. But with, with Smith back at the strong safety spot, they've, he's done a pretty good job for the Sooner football team. And you get a couple of picks in the ball game, that's been a tremendous day. In Oklahoma trying to take command of this game. Brown again, he's wrapped up. Mark him near the seven or eight yard line. Well, the offense here for Oklahoma got a first and goal now, what, the seven yard line? So yeah. plenty of opportunity here to put another touchdown on the board here. First and goal. Finley in motion. He had a touchdown reception earlier. They fake to Brown. Thompson. Throws it away as Kelly was well covered in the end zone. And there again is something that they like about Paul Thompson. Nothing to do. Just get rid of it. A good decision there. He's only got two receivers out in the pattern because it's kind of a closed formation with how they line things up. But Paul Thompson eludes the, the pressure, throws the ball away. And not a negative play and not a mistake play, a turnover. Oklahoma shooting for its sixth consecutive win, and the Sooners back in the Big 12 South hunt right now as Texas sitting idle this week before they beat AM. They are 6 and 1, and Oklahoma will need to win here and at Oklahoma State next week and hope for a Texas loss to AM to get the Big 12 South Championship. Brown dives in and 
Touchdown, Oklahoma. Seven yards on the carry, and Chris Brown gets the TD, his fourth of the season. Well, Oklahoma goes with an unbalanced formation here, bringing most of their strength to the near sideline. Then they just go weak side, and Chris Brown, he just wins the corner on the outside. Good speed there by the tailback and good blocking up front. Just enough here for Chris Brown to get out there, and a pitch from Paul Thompson and good block outside by Eldridge allows him to get to the end zone. And all set up by that 52-yard interception return from Kelly. And Hartley pumps it through. So Oklahoma tacks on seven more. And now it's 27-3 with 7.44 to go third quarter here in Waco. Oklahoma taking control. Welcome back to Floyd Casey Stadium. It's 27 to three as this one is booted off. And Baker from the goal line. 15 and tackled about the 18, 18 and a half yard line as Oklahoma, the Dodd scoring drive and they can thank Reggie Smith for setting up this short 18 yard drive. His interception return Allowed Brown then to take it in on a seven yard TD run. Four plays, 18 yards, 131 on the Dodge scoring drive. Good job by Oklahoma converting on the uh, interception by Smith. He goes back out there to perhaps get a third one on the day. But Baylor offensively, they've got to get some consistency and some rhythm. And you got a young quarterback back there. You just got to keep rolling him out there and keep going with him. And the Bears, of course, uh, making the change to the spread offense this year. Offensive coordinator Lee Hayes coming in with some rough times. And here's some more. Samansky again. Trying to get away from that pressure, and he's brought down by Stephen Coleman, a junior from Dallas Skyline High School, as Coleman comes up with yet another sack. Well, Coleman's just going to come from the left side, get an inside move, and do a good job of just continuing the quarterback. And Zemanski just can't outrun the big fella. A man from Dallas, Texas, and enjoying playing here in Waco. Probably got some family and friends down here to watch his football game. Count on that. Marcus Walker is from Waco for Oklahoma and said his ticket count was up at 30 about Friday afternoon. So he turned his phone off. Yeah, <laughs> good idea. Second out of 25. Szymanski avoids the safety and then dives out near the 10 yard line. Almost a disaster play for Blake Szymanski and freshman having a chance to play, you know, this season because of the injury to Sean Bell. Sean Bell, their, their record setting senior quarterback that Baylor has. And, as he was playing with his football team this year, they had a lot of confidence with, with what they were doing. Sean Bell, young man who really, this offense that Lee Hayes installed, really I think it suited him very well in his skills and his ability to throw the football. And I think that uh, you know, he's sorely missed, but Blake Zemanski's having to grow up here under fire. Third and 18. Yeah, really took a lot of wind out of this team besides the obvious physical talents. And here comes Oklahoma with a sack in the end zone. And that is a safety. As Szymanski is tackled, Alonzo Dotson leading the way this time. And give Oklahoma a couple more. Well, we talked about dominance here. Dominating the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly what this Oklahoma defensive front has done. And they're going right back to the quarterback. And Dotson just going to continue right up to the middle there. Nobody even blocks him. Jason Smith lets him go inside. And he easily gets to Blake Szymanski. Oklahoma will receive the kick when we come back. Welcome back to Floyd Casey Stadium with Oklahoma getting the safety. It's now 29 to three over Baylor University. We certainly are all uh, saddened by the loss of Bo Schembechler, the one-time Michigan football coach who passed away yesterday. It was just a tremendous asset to the game and we are glad to have with us now we have the opportunity of Grant Taft, the former head coach of Baylor, the president of the American Football Coaches Association. I know you knew Bo very well and uh, had to be uh, some very sad news. Well, I did know Bo extremely well. We uh, competed against each other in 76, ended up with a tie game up in Michigan, 
And uh, those kinds of games keep you close. You, nobody has any animosity after it's over. We, we both are mad because we didn't win, but uh, he's been a dear friend. He's featured in my last book. Uh, one of the great coaches of all times, one of the great human beings, loved by his players and, and loved by our association. He was a leader in our association, and there's so many great stories about Bo, but Well, Oklahoma, as we come to the action, Iglesias returns the punt, and he will take it to the house touchdown Sooners. Wow. They continue to pour it on, 83 yards for Joaquin Iglesias as he gets the TD on the return. Coach Tarr to give you such a rude welcome oh, up no. here <laughs> for the Baylor football yeah. team. Well, this is a tremendous run back by Joaquin Iglesias, and this is a punt after a safety, and he takes it right up the middle here. Then he just uses his speed to get to the outside and does a nice job of outrunning everyone on the Baylor football team. Nobody's going to touch Joaquin before he crosses that goal line. And now for the point after, as Hartley comes on, and it's 35-3. to three. This was a 13-3 to three game at the half, and the Sooners scored on the first possession in less than two minutes and 15 seconds, and they haven't turned around since as they tack on the extra point. Tell us a little bit about just Shem Becker, what he meant to the game of football, and what a leader he was, because he seemed to have such a huge impact. Well, he, he was an individual that uh, was very gruff and very hard-nosed on his players. I remember when we played them in 76, we pulled up in the bus to the stadium. We're going in for the little walkthrough, and here comes a Michigan team. Helmets on, bleeding, <laughs> shoulders drooped down, and uh, they'd been out there scrimmaging on Friday prior to the game because he had gotten mad at them. He told me, told me later, but... Uh, uh, he, he just had that unique quality of honesty and integrity that everybody trusted and uh, everybody loved, and particularly his players and the people that supported the game. You know, the Michigan-Ohio State game uh, is what it is, uh, largely because of he and Woody Hayes and what they put against each other in those two years. And he loved Woody, although uh, they have, were great enemies on the football field. And there's just some wonderful stories about uh, – of course, uh, Woody and, and Bo uh, during those periods of time. Well, it would be hard to believe that he and his passing won't have a, just an incredible effect on Michigan. I just can't imagine it not. I think it's one of the great ironies uh, in recent uh, sports history because of the importance of this year's game and then to have him pass away the day before the game. It's going to have an effect on the game. There's no question about it, Bill. Coach, I had an opportunity to meet Bo several years ago back in 1994. Covered my first ever college football game up in, up in Michigan, and, and Coach, Coach Schembeck was actually out of the game at that time. But still, when he came into the room and talked to us, the TV guys, he told us, you boys better not screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of his way to kind of introduce himself to us, and just a great presence. Uh, one of the great stories is after we played to that 10-10 uh, to 10 tie on Monday, I got a telephone call from Woody Hayes. And he said, now tell me about the play your tailback used during that game. So I had to tell him all about it step by step. And then he said, send me the film. <laughs> and I said, well, what, wait a minute, what about Bo? And he said, well, blankety blank, Bo's <laughs> got a film. I said, well, okay, coach. So I called Bo, and before I, he said anything, I said hello to him. He said, Grant, he said he called you, didn't he? And I said, yeah. He said he wants film, doesn't he? I said, yeah, and he wanted to know about that play. I said, yeah. He said, send him the film. He'll drive you crazy unless you send it to him. <laughs> then I said, when do you all play? And he said, oh, we play the last game of the season, but we work on each other every Monday. Yeah, and uh, true story. I tell you what, uh, I saw one of the clips the other night on the news with it, with speaking to his team before the Ohio State game, and I'm just watching a videotape that's 23 years old. I was ready to go to the locker room and play. I that mean, was a speech about the team. Yeah, yeah, that, that's, and that's so and much. That's a great uh, speech, and it's so real for life itself. Grant Taft is visiting here with us as we talk about Bo Schembeck, where Oklahoma has taken control of this football game, and boy, got to be tough. Uh, to watch your Bears these days, uh, this team had it rolling. We mentioned the injury to Sean Bell kind of sucked the air out of this ball club. Yeah, evidently uh, his leadership was uh, uh, more uh, needed than most people's suspicion. Uh, however, they've struggled defensively the last uh, three weeks, and uh, uh, they, they had it going. I think they're much better than they've been in the past, and uh, they've got a good recruiting class, everybody tells me. And so 
We'll see what happens after that. Well, the foundation that Guy Morris has put here with his new offensive system, his, his assistant coaching staff is, is really tremendous. I think they're a great bunch of guys you know, to be able to recruit with, with NFL ties and those kinds of things. And they're going to have they're going to have just attract players that want to play in an offensive system like this, which is wide open style and then an aggressive attacking style of defense. I think that's an excellent evaluation. Uh, they have recruited the best probably in the last 12, 14 years that they've recruited around here for this upcoming class. And then this offense compels youngsters to come sure. because it's wide open. Uh, the thing they can do, and I think they will, is get better defensively. Grant Taff here with us as uh, Sepulveda will kick it away for Baylor. And here is Smith on the return. Fumbled this one, but he picks it right back up. And he breaks through and is tackled about the 35-yard line. And a flag is thrown there. We had an official decked on the near side of the field. And uh, a 51-yard punt. Hopefully everybody's okay. I kind of thought there that Reggie Smith, as he caught that football, that his knee actually might have touched the ground as he picked the football yeah. up, and then he continued once again. So everything beyond that would be negated. However, they didn't mark it. Let's take a look here and see what. Take a look at Reggie Smith there as he as he mishandles this second punt of the day, and it goes to the ground. And, and as he picks it up, his knee is certainly on the ground right there. So he's in contact with it. And the ball should be stopped right there as he as he uh, picks it up. This is one, certainly the replay officials here for the Big 12 should be looking at this, and they should certainly get that ball back there inside the 30-yard line. And Baylor is maintaining possession. Coach Stoops may be challenging this, realizing what we do. And and he's calling a timeout yeah. instead. And we're being told by our producer, Bob Steinfeld, that they are looking at this play, the replay officials are. All right, Grant, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You've had great to be with you guys. All right, enjoyed it. Grant Taft, the president of the AFCA, here with us. The statue out front here at Floyd KC Stadium. We'll be right back with a 36 to 3. Welcome back to Waco and Floyd KC Stadium. Oklahoma 36 to 3 winner or leader, they hope to be winner, uh, over Baylor. And Bob Stoops with the coach's challenge because Smith, it appeared by our replay, that he had put his knee down when picking the football back up. And then, of course, there was the fumble. Baylor recovers. So it was ruled that Baylor was going to get possession. And that's, of course, why Coach Stoops threw out the flag. Now, this is college football, folks, and not the NFL. You see Reggie Smith on the ground picking the ball up and his knee on the ground. So it's just a matter of if his knee was on the ground at the same time he was picking that football up, he would be down. It just could be a judgment call on the field. The official that actually would have called that play actually got knocked backwards. So I think he was knocked down, was not able to officiate that play. So there, it's under review here by the Big 12 officials. Davis, Braylon Davis is the man that recovered the fumble. After review, the ball carrier lifted his knee, got possession. When he had gained possession, his knee was out. It is a fumble, Bears recovery. Well, interesting. They ruled that he uh, regained possession after his knee came off the ground. So Reggie Smith picked that football up and continued down the field and, and then fumbled it away to the Baylor Bears. <laughs> One more look at it. We'll see how they ruled it here. Well, here you go. Here's Reggie Smith. The ball is down on the ground. He stopped right there. He's got control. His knee is down. I'm, I'm surprised that they're overturning this or, or not overturning it. So nonetheless, it's going to be Baylor football. So Smith's been involved in everything today. That's twice that he's had a fumble. That was not, and uh, one led to a field goal, and he's returned two interceptions, one for a touchdown, and one that set up another score for OU. White, the receiver here. 3rd quarter winding down with 326 and counting. First down markers brought to you by Overstock.com with live customer service and an online best price guaranteed. Shopping online has never been easier. Overstock.com. It was great visiting with Coach Taff, and yeah. he is one of those icons, you know, here in the state of Texas, much like that uh, Bo Schimbeckler was in, in Michigan. So just kind of reflect on some of these coaches and what they've done. If For young people who have not really followed the game of football a lot and they don't really know who Bo Beckler is and what he means to, to Michigan and that rivalry, 
If you're an Oklahoma fan, just think of Barry, Barry Switzer in the state of Oklahoma, what he means to college football in that state, and that's the kind of icon that Bo Schembechler was. Now, Schembechler did not get the national title, had a slew of Big Ten titles and some Rose Bowls, but couldn't get that national championship. Boy, his impact, though, was absolutely amazing, and certainly uh, as Mosley falls forward here on a first and ten, I, I agree with what Coach Taft was saying, that the connection with Woody Hayes as being an assistant and then going to Michigan, and both of them just those fiery personalities, <laughs> that made that series oh, yeah. that through the ups and downs, and then today here they battle again, number one versus number two, and it certainly is uh, interesting. Second down and nine, the ball on the 23-yard line. Szymanski okay. to throw it. Incomplete off the hands of Dominic Ziegler. A little high for it. And that's the ball that Dominic Ziegler is going to catch nine out of ten times, no doubt about it. And he goes up high for that football, and he normally would bring this football down. Szymanski play action pass in the pocket there, and you see the pressure. Burdine trying to put pressure on him. Gets here just a little bit late, rolls him up on the legs, but Dominic Ziegler with his great leaping ability knows that he should come down with that football. Oklahoma, a 23-point quarter with 2.10 to go, and Baylor down 36-3, to and it's third and nine for the 23 for the Bears. Szymanski fakes to Mosley, and here they come again. He is wrapped hard. C.J. Ayu comes up 6'4", 275, the senior out of Highland, Utah. Well, C.J.'s had a nice game inside here for this OU defense, getting back to the quarterback numerous times in his football game. And I just think they're confusing the front of, of the, the offensive lineman up front for Baylor. They've stunted around several different ways. They brought the defensive secondary. They brought the linebackers. A lot of different pressures, and they're having some difficulty with it today. Officially the fifth sack of Szymanski now, and IU comes up with this one. There's Brent Venables, the defensive coordinator. Call signals on the sideline for the Sooners. And Szymanski with a quick kick. And down at the 15-yard line. That's where Oklahoma will take over. College football quadruple header will continue later today. And most of you will get a chance to see another Big 12 battle up in Kansas as Lawrence the site for KUK State. Then it's Washington taking on Washington State from the Pac-10. And another Pac-10 game to wrap it up. UCLA and Arizona State. That continues after our game right here on FSN. Well, interesting there, you're punting with your quarterback, not using your All-American punter to help his numbers, too. You don't want those short punts to go against your numbers? Yeah. As, uh, Oklahoma gets it back. Thompson, play action. He's got time. Now they come in on it, and incomplete. Gutierrez can't come up with it. Football with the toss from Paul Thompson. Would have been about a short gain, four or five yards, and maybe a chance to run after that. Gutierrez has made one grab so far this season. You see the average per play in eight of their ten games, five plus, which is pretty decent today. Tremendous, 8.2 yards per play. So second and ten. Thompson. 11 of 17 today for 159 yards. And heard the popping on that play as Nick Moore comes up with a hit for Baylor. Time for our Jack Link's trivia question today. Can you name the only quarterback in Baylor history to lead the Bears in passing for four consecutive seasons? In the building today. Hey, he's here. In the building today. Timeout is called. Oklahoma with 17 seconds to go here in this third quarter. And then pouring it on, 36 to 3. Sooners getting a Kelly TD pass reception. Brown a TD run. Dotson a safe, safety. And Iglesias an 83 yard kick return after the safety to take control of this football game. Whole different story last year in Norman. The Bears. We're 11 down in the second half, came back, tied it on this 55-yard TD pass from Sean Bell to Dominique Ziegler. That was in the second overtime. 
Brett Bomar hitting Joaquin Iglesias to lift the Sooners to a 37-30 victory. And saw Gutierrez a moment ago. He ran for 173 yards, 30 carries in that game as OU continued to throw the shutout in the series. They're up 15-0 in lifetime against the Baylor Bears. Yeah, and Baylor, the only team that they have not beaten in the Big 12 Conference at any time is this Sooner football team. And Guy Morris, I know he'd like to get one chalked up. He had a chance last year. That ball game tied up the end. And went in overtime, couldn't pull it out. The Sooners did a good job of finishing that ball game off and, and here comfortably in lead. So Guy Morris going to have to look to the future, I guess, to possibly get a win here against Oklahoma. Now the uh, bowl goal has been denied once again with the uh, throws of the three-game losing skin. Well, the trivia answer of Jack Lynx, the only QB in Baylor history to lead the Bears in passing four straight seasons. J.J. Joe, 90-93, 5,995 career yards, and now the analyst in the Baylor radio network. It is third down and nine. Ball is on the 16th. Thompson nearly picked off, knocked away by C.J. Wilson. Well, C.J. Wilson is one of the better cornerbacks, I think, in this conference. He's got great abilities. He's very gregarious. And when you talk to C.J., he's always got a, got a comment for you, and he does a good job with his feet of breaking forward and exploding as the ball comes out there to the receiver and almost makes a nice interception for Baylor. He's a, he's a guy, he's a lean leader, and he's one of the seniors on this football team. And I think he's the... Uh, He's probably going to have a future, perhaps, to have a chance to play on Sunday. He's just got great athletic ability, and he's got a good size and a good frame that uh, somebody might find a spot for him. One of the great interviews in the Big 12 Conference. There's no question about that. He's always got something to say. Sims, the Duke man, stays away from it on the punt. And that'll end the third quarter with Oklahoma in control of the football game on that punt there by Michael Cohen in the kick. That's the end of the third quarter. It is Oklahoma 36, Baylor 3. You're watching Big 12 football presented by Kia Serra on FSN. Welcome back, College Football Saturday. Brought to you by Kia Serra and our TiVo game summary today. Oklahoma, a huge third quarter. 23 points, getting most of that in about a seven minute span. And then Brown having a key running day. Oklahoma surviving the turnovers as well. Here is Baylor with uh, carrying the football is Shelton on the reception, and he takes it about the 46 yard line. Again, that game summary. I don't know, Gary, how long OU can go making four turnovers and only allowing three points. They, they cheated death in that turnover department against Tech. Today, Baylor unable to take advantage of those opportunities. That happens in Bedlam against Oklahoma State next week. It could be a different story. Yeah, Mike Gundy's got a very disciplined football team, and they're playing a lot better. And no doubt about it with Bobby Reed and that explosive offense. They're going to take advantage of opportunities. They've got a great running game and explosive passing game as well. Okay, okay. Szymanski with the completion here to Trent Shelton near the 39-yard line. That'll move the chains. Let's send it down to Jim Knox. All right, thank you, Bill. Cheerleaders of the week, the Baylor Bears. Check this out. They call this a QB, but they're going to do it with a long-distance touch. Matt and Robbie on their cell phone. Uh, Matt's trying to get his out. Who are you calling, Matt? Hey, I'm calling my mom. Mom? <laughs> mom, help. <laughs> mom, did you get her? Hey, Mom, you see me on TV? I'm on the sin. Here we go. Oh, nice job. <laughs> Now, that's worth high mom, all right? Instead of just mugging for the camera. I tell you, the man talent. deserves some FaceTime when he can put, put a young lady up like that on one hand. That's a good job, young man. <laughs> he called his mom. That's right. Take care of your mama. <laughs> Those are the days on the field, you know, guys. You know, football players used to, used to say hi, mom. Now yeah. it's not. There's not a whole lot of other things going on out there. Yeah, a lot of it we don't want to see. Second down and 10, fourth quarter underway here with Oklahoma and Baylor, and it's 36-3, Oklahoma. Ziegler goes back in motion toward the top of your screen as Szymanski takes the snap. They come after him again, Harris with his face. He completes it to 35, the 30, and down to the 20. And that is Jacoby Jones once again. Well, you gotta come up and make plays and make tackles, and. 
Jaco Jacoby Jones does a good job here of running after the catch, gets it on the outside, and the strong safety who comes up, guess what, number three who's been in the action all, all day here for Oklahoma is going to miss this tackle. That's Reggie Smith doing the dive tackle. He doesn't get anything on Jacoby Jones. Jones, a sophomore from Bangs, Texas, 5'11", 211, only had two receptions coming in. Picked up a couple here this afternoon. This one is complete. Goes to Sims outside the 10, down about the 12-yard line. You know, one of the things that I've noticed about Blake Zemanski, Bill, when he has time to throw and survey the defense, he can throw the football, and he can deliver it well enough to, to make completions if his receivers are on the right routes. I think the problem they've had so far in this ball game is just the dominance by the defensive front for Oklahoma. The different types of pressures that they've brought with linebackers and, and the corner blitzes and those kinds of things, three-man rush, four-man rush. They've had some trouble holding those guys out at times, and it's been the undoing of the Bears up front. Second and seven, looking for Ziegler. Over to cover, though, was Reggie Smith once again. Yeah, it's, it's hard to just evaluate him on numbers in a game like this where Oklahoma has just kept terrific pressure on him. Zemanski, a guy who played at Wichita Falls Ryder High School and threw for 4,083 yards and 45 touchdowns in a 14-game season. Guys, got well, he's seeing a whole lot different defense now because yeah. you've got this Oklahoma defense, which is number one in the Big 12, and they're pressuring this quarterback a lot of different ways today. And He's certainly going to learn a lot from this tape, and I'm sure he'll watch it over and over again to prepare for uh, another contest upcoming and get ready for next season. He's 22 of 43 today for 188 yards. He's been picked a couple of times. Brent Venables will talk it over as we'll have a timeout call here. Oklahoma with a 36-3 lead. College football Saturday presented by Kia Sarah. Kia Sarah wireless call of the game. Many times it's a play-by-play -play call. No, it's Matt calls his mom while performing. <laughs> That's a pretty good call right there. Hope he had it on speed dial. <laughs> Third and seven for Baylor here. And incomplete, looking in the end zone for Trent Shelton. Now we talked about the quarterback here, Blake Zemanski, what he's had to deal with all day and the different pressures and things that he's dealt with in this Oklahoma defense. And it's been pretty impressive what the Sooners have been able to do. They put pressure on him all day long. They've hit him from every angle. Defensive linemen coming at him, defensive backs, and a lot of guys get into the action. Blake Zemanski has found out that this Oklahoma defense has come to play today. And that's been the big reason why the Sooners are firmly in control of this football game. Fourth and seven now, and they will go for it from the 13-yard line. And 36 to three, nothing to lose. Szymanski and incomplete trying to hook up with White in the end zone. No flags, and Oklahoma will take over on downs. Now Bob Stoops got to be happy about what his defense has done out there today, Bill. And Baylor offense not really able to get a whole lot going here. Only three points on the day, and that's only after you know a miscue, a, miss a fumble, fumbled punt return by Reggie Smith that they picked up, and the defense stopped him. They forced him to try a field goal, and that's the only three points they've had on the board. And Oklahoma coming in that defense number one in the country, and or not, number one in the league, number 18 in the nation, allowing just 16 points a game. And total defense giving up just 277 yards. And today they've given up 140 so far. The Sooners. Okay, okay. I can imagine he'd like to really get that ground game going here and just take a nice, long, time-consuming drive and punch in one more. They like to run it out there and get that offensive line to be dominant here and run the football. Chris Brown's come in here, done a pretty good job running the football. Good years. We've seen him, Alan Patrick. Remember, who's not playing this football game because of a injured ankle and still a big question mark. Will Adrian Peterson be ready to play in the Bedlam game next week? Uh, we'll find out with the flag thrown here. And Peterson now. Uh, 71, offense, five yards, second down. Bill, give me your best guess. In percentage terms, what do you think uh, Adrian's chances are of, <laughs> a lot of talk of playing next week? You haven't followed the story up in Oklahoma about that. Is, uh, and Oklahoma coaches just say, hey, 
honestly, we've had no conversation because until he gets an X-ray the week of the game, right? Uh, and, and Bob Stoops in his news conference last Monday said, "Hey, we'll we'll see about next week." That was when he was supposed to be back under the first diagnosis when he injured it six weeks ago. Well, Adrian's been out of the sling for a couple of weeks and some cardio work, they say, mainly. Here is Brown again on the carry. He yeah, goes he's been about able to the 13, make it the 18-yard line. Well, last year against Oklahoma State, Adrian Peterson. Pretty good effort. Young man does what he does best, and that needs to run the football north and south. And he's got speed, and that's what they're, they like about him most. He leads this football team this year in average yardage per carry at 5.6 yards per carry. Doesn't matter that Alan Patrick has done a good job with the three games that he's been there to rush the football. Over 200 yards rushing against the Cowboys last year, Adrian Peterson, and I'm sure he'd like to, if he's able to healthy and be able to go, I'm sure he'd like to go against the Pokes one more time. Brown again, slashes it across the 25 and has stopped near the 26 yard line, should have the first down. That'll move the chains for him. Brown having quite a day still moving. You know, the other thing, let's take a look at uh, Brown's effort here so far. Well, Chris Brown has shown that he could break tackles. That's the thing that I think is most impressive with him. He has enough speed, he's got enough balance to where he makes some people miss and he breaks arm tackles. And that's what you want from your running back. And you give it to your running back consistently and he's got a, the ability to make people miss and break tackles. It's gonna give you a lot of yards after contact. And Chris Brown's had a nice day. 18 carries, 146, and you got Gutierrez. Uh, and then also, you may very well have Patrick back next week. I would certainly think he would be able to go okay, if okay. Peterson is not. So uh, you never know. And then the other part of that story, Gary, is that Adrian Peterson, if he's able to come back next week or for a bowl game, that adds to the intrigue as to where Oklahoma might be going postseason because, let's face it, if Adrian T. Peterson's going to go to the NFL, most believe he is after this season one way or another, what bowl wouldn't want to have him in his final college appearance to boost numbers? I think you're exactly right. Adrian Peterson is a draw. He's definitely a draw in college football. He, He's in one of the top two or three players in all of college football right now. Even though he's injured, not on the field, and everybody knows about him, he's, he is probably the best running back in the country, even though he's in street close. A lot of interest for a lot of reasons. And Thompson back in the airways as he completes this one to Jermaine Gresham, a freshman out of Ardmore, Oklahoma. And Gresham moved the chains out to the 49-yard line on a 14-yard pickup. Now Oklahoma, they're rushing leaders with Adrian Peterson in the mix. Well, uh, he's very close. He just needs about 150 yards, I believe, is what the number is, Bill, to become the all-time leading rusher in Oklahoma history and might have one, maybe two games to get there if he's able to play against Oklahoma State next year and then can, assuming he play in a bowl game. And as a junior, remember. Just look at the names on there. Yeah, <laughs> that's a pretty good company. Billy Sims, Joe Washington, Quentin Griffin, all those guys. Steve Owens. He's been trophy winner, so there's been some great tradition running the football in Oklahoma, and uh, Adrian Peterson to possibly be a top of that list. I think it's something that he would like to have in his trophy case as he leaves that university. I don't know why not. Well, it's second down and four now for Oklahoma as they continue to do, as we mentioned, chew up some time and chew up the field as Baylor. Down 36 to three, been unable to take advantage of some OU turnovers. And then in the third quarter, OU, whatever happened at halftime, they got the message because they just exploded with 23 points. Okay. Brown again with the carry, diving near the first down marker. And for Baylor, frustrating. Going five and six last year. Everybody knowing the goal was a bull last year, they didn't get it. This year, the same thing. What killed them, as you look back, is the one and three non-conference start. Yeah, the non-conference was tough for them, and if they'd have gotten a couple of those wins where they really should have thought they should have had a chance to win those football games, they could have gotten to the six-win plateau, which would have got them to be bowl eligible. I think it's a huge, huge season, though, for Guy Morris and his football team. Three conference wins this year. This is the most ever for Baylor in the Big 12. The ball fumbled, and it's picked up. Davis. Davis to the 20, got by one, he'll score. Davis will score on the fumble return. 55 yards. Braylon Davis 
His second fumble recovery of the day, Bill. He got the first one. Malcolm Kelly put it on the ground. And this time, Chris Brown puts it on the ground. And Guy Morris got something to be happy about. Quarterback coming up, making a play here. Paul Thompson just going to hand it off here to Chris Brown. And the ball just never, he never has control of it. And Braylon Davis on the outside picks it up and runs it very well. And Chris Brown can't get him down by the shirt tail or the back of his legs. And nice move on Paul Thompson, who can't get him down either. So Baylor has something to smile about here with Braylon Davis. What a bizarre day in the turnover department. And the point after by Havens, it is good. So it is 36 to 10 now. Baylor gets on the board with a touchdown. We'll return after this word from Dr. Pepper and your local, Dr. Pepper Bodler. Welcome back. Braylon Davis gives the Baylor fans a little something to cheer about here finally this afternoon with the 55-yard return of the fumble, his second fumble return, and as a result, it's 36 to 10, and Oklahoma will get the ball back, and Bob Stoops still got to be going. Hmm. Yeah, turnovers, you know, turnovers, fumbles. Yeah, that uh, still haven't got that fixed. Three lost fumbles on the day, the one interception, so things not going right in that department for, for Bob Stoops. Certainly want to clean that up. Four turnovers against Tech last week. All right, if you're Baylor, the onside kick in here with 7.48 to go. I think they're going to kick it deep. I would imagine that. Go ahead and see if he can't boot it out of the end zone. And it'll be downed there by Oklahoma. Gutierrez, they'll bring it out to the 20. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back. It's 36-10. Oklahoma, first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Tops and hands off to Gutierrez and Jim Knox. He's gone from cheerleaders making phone calls to now a little country music star. Yeah, Bill, we're gonna answer an email. Carol from Oklahoma City was wondering if Toby Keith, you know, the country West country music star was out here at the game. Big Oklahoma Sooner fan. And yes, here he is, uh, Toby Keith enjoying the game. And you don't come here much, but because you just are completing a tour, what brings you to today's game? A little break? Yeah, we were coming over today, going to San Antonio. We wrapped the tour up and I had a uh, Ford thing I had to go do in a San Antonio. So, uh, my assistant said, hey, they're playing down below. We just dropped down today and caught a game, man. For time. And now next week, you're going to miss the Bedlam series, but I understand you already have that taken care of, right? I'm taking my kids to the uh, New York for the uh, Thanksgiving Day Parade. So, But we've got a bar rented out, me and Coach Switzer, and we're going to be down <laughs> watching the Bedlam game. So. Oh, you and Coach Switzer. Yeah. That could be a rough bar right there, yeah, huh? It would be a redneck bar anyway. <laughs> Speaking of bar, Phil Mollica, our director, says his favorite song is I Love the Bar. That I love bar. this bar, yeah. Feels right. Feels got good taste. You want to give him a little, uh, little taste? It's my kind of place, Phil. I love this bar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Toby. Appreciate it. All right. Anything to keep the director happy? All right. It's first and ten here, in Oklahoma. Uh, it's quite a seed following the suitors, and yeah, I can imagine that seed next week with Toby Keith and Coach Switzer getting together. Well, that'll be fun. Yeah. Okay. Let's, let's talk about Paul Thompson here, Bill. In this football game, he has done a pretty good job. He's on the day, what, 178 yards passing in this football game, and got over 2,000 yards now for the season. That puts him into pretty good company. Yeah, 2,092. He's now that's the eighth best season. He just passed Rhett Bomar by the. Amazing, isn't it? Uh, Josh Heupel is they had the best season ever. That was in '99, 3,850, and Heupel owns a couple of those years. Also, uh, Jason White, and Nate Hibble, and Kale Gundy have had better seasons. But uh, another game show to go. So he's moving up the ladder. Just amazing that this guy back in the first day of August was was a wide receiver, and now he's a leader and a quarterback of this football team that is about to win its ninth game. Gutierrez with a carry here. Yeah, when you see Gutierrez run, I think I think he's a fan favorite, no doubt about that, because undersized, just a guy with a great heart and a great great desire to play football, and when he gets a football in his hands, he explodes and he churns those 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 not very long legs. I call him kind of a short leg guy, and just gets going pretty quick. And first through there for a nice gain, ten yards on that carry. And it's first and 10 at the 43. Brown, I'm assuming, is done for the day with 22 carries, 158 yards. Eldridge in motion. 
Gutierrez. And Gutierrez again, wrapping up around the football and motors ahead across midfield into Baylor territory with just under five minutes to go. OU 36-10. First down marker is brought to you by Overstock.com, your online source for savings on everything from video games to big screen TVs. Well, 32 seniors for this Baylor football team, Bill, is what uh, Guy Morris is going to graduate. And so he's got a lot of troops he's got to bring back to the, to the stable here, so to speak, to, to build his football team back. And the thing about recruiting for this, we talked about it with Coach Taffer. That's going to be one of the key things for him as Oklahoma rushes for another first down in this ball game. You know, you see this play here by Gutierrez. It's kind of typical. This offensive line is basically a young group as well. And... Uh, to see them just take over and start to dominate at certain times, just realize that even though there's a lot of good things possibly ahead for the Sooners this year, down the road it's going to be incredible. Well, 79, Chris Messner getting taken out of the game here, the only senior on that group getting a hand slap by Bob Stoops as he comes to the sideline. And so you've got a, a young group of offensive linemen out there on the field for the Sooners, and they're just going to improve and get better over time. And, you know, that's the, the thing you, you look for. You're trying to build from within, and they – Bob, Bob Stoops, what he does with football players is player development. You know, they get great recruits. They're able to recruit great talent. You know, they're going to get the three, four, and five-star type players. But, Bill, you know, what they're able to do over the course of the time that they have them in their program is they develop those players into star quality players. And just look at the numbers of players that Oklahoma has in the pros and in the NFL currently. And it just goes to show you what kind of player development program with strength and conditioning, what they bring on the field that the talent that Oklahoma has. Well, and, and the thing there that I think all the coaches really respect, yeah, they have great players they recruit, but those guys come in there with expectations and are prepared to play from day one because he's always said the best players play. It's not like if, if you were my starting defensive back that automatically I come in behind you. The best players play, and as a result, they prepare that way. Second down and eight, and Brown is back in the game, and he rolls across the 35 down about the 33-yard line. Our Dr. Pepper student athlete spotlight this week. It goes to Baylor and the secondary guy, Maurice Lindquist, part of the Big 12 Fall Sports Good Works team, volunteers with the Special Olympians, Coach for Kids, and Santa's Workshop. So many of these guys with all the football programs are so involved in the community and giving back. Congratulations to Maurice Lindquist, one of those. Yeah, one of the many seniors going to be leaving this Baylor football team this season. This is his last... Uh, Last game out there, but got a smile on his face. Already graduated, in fact. They got a number of guys on this team that have been fifth year guys that have got their degrees already and working on masters. Here is Brown, keeps it in bounds, going to the outside near the 28 yard line. 213 to go. That'll move the chains and stop the clock briefly. Still, let's talk about next week. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. We're gonna be up there at the Bedlam game and in Stillwater and should be fun. Should be a fun ball game. You take a look at Mike Gundy's football team and what he's done up there. It's been, a, a, I think, a pretty pretty good progression with the new offensive coordinator, Larry Fedor, bringing that offensive together and offensively throwing the football with, with Bobby Reed and then the three running backs that they have up there with Mike Hamilton, Toaston, and uh, Dontrell Savage, who I think is going to be a tremendous player in this conference. Well, in Oklahoma State playing Texas Tech out of the South Plains of Lubbock today. That's an interesting battle with two teams that are bowl bound. OSU leads that one 17 nothing. we're told, in the early going. So they may come in with some huge momentum into that contest. And at Boone Pickens Stadium, yeah, it should be Bedlam, should it? It's definitely going to be Bedlam. <laughs> should be, it should be a great scene for college football. And I know these players in state up there, they certainly uh, certainly look forward to that contest. Kind of throw out the, kind of throw out the records at that point because this is a certainly a, a very heated rivalry with all the players that played against each other in high school. And there's some Oklahoma players on, on both squads from the state of Oklahoma, played high school football there. So a lot of different things to talk about uh, next week when we get up to Stillwater. Yeah, and a lot of big rivalries to end the season. We've got KUK State coming up later on here in FSN. Speaking of that, Kerry takes it down to the 18-yard line. College football Saturday on FSN is presented by Cell Phone Karma. It's real. Kia Sarah Wireless reminds you to please dial responsibly. And brought to you in part by Best Buy. More than just HD, it's HD done right at Best Buy. And by Dr. Pepper. 23 flavors that add up to one bold taste. Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. We're the home of Dr. Pepper down here in Waco. 
you stop by that museum if you're right here. Yeah, and the clock is running. It's uh, under a minute to go. And Oklahoma in no hurry here to get after the football. And they're going to get in the victory formation here, take a couple of snaps. And that's the kind of coach that Bob Stoops is. He has no desire to, to run another play here or unnecessarily to even perhaps get a touchdown against his Baylor football team. And just a class individual that he is in regards to how he approaches the end of games and scoring and those kinds of things. But you saw a better football team win this game today, Bill. No question about that. Oklahoma able to overcome, what, five turnovers, yet still win convincingly 36-10 to 10 over the Baylor Bears. And the Sooners, the hottest team in the Big 12, go to 9-2, and 6-1 and one in the league. The Bears completed at 4-8 and eight and 3-5. and five. And our best buy player of the game, Reggie Smith, a pair of interceptions. He broke up three, had a couple of tackles, scored a touchdown, did a little bit of everything today for Oklahoma and Bob Stoops. So stay with us. We'll have post game with reaction from the coaches and players when we come back. The final again, our Kyocera College Football Saturday game here. 36-10, Oklahoma the winner. Welcome back. Oklahoma 36, Baylor 10, the final score here today. Let's send it down to Jim Knox with certainly a a happy coach, Bob Stoops of Oklahoma. All right, thank you very much, Bill. And Coach Stoops, congratulations. Uh, you turned the ball over five times today, but yet you win very convincingly. Well, we played great defense uh, really the, the entire day and got us out of some of those. But I know I, it's uh, really frustrating for me because uh, normally that, uh, you know, you, you just can't play like that. And we just got to learn to take care of the football, and, and hopefully we will. Well, let's talk about the offense first, uh, Chris Brown. Paul Thompson, I think, performed well again today. It seems like he's getting better each game out. It's too bad the season's almost coming to a close. Uh, Paul's been play has played great the entire year and uh, had another excellent game today. Proud of our young freshman, Chris Brown, came in and ran the ball really well and, and uh, did, a, did a nice job, too. Had that late fumble, but, uh, but still, you know, as a young guy, he's learning and getting better. Talk about the Bedlam series next week against Oklahoma State. You guys took care of business today. Could have overlooked Baylor like a lot of teams probably would have, but you guys did that. Now you look towards next week. That's right. And, uh, last game of the year, a big, uh, exciting game. So uh, our guys, we just we got to take care of the football this week, and uh, hopefully we'll be more conscientious about it, keep executing like we have. Okay, Coach, I want to ask you one last question, and I know you've heard about this in the past, but the chance of Adrian Peterson, do you have any idea whether or not he will play next week? Uh, we'll talk to the doctors on uh, Monday, Sunday, Monday. So uh, until I get with them, it'd be crazy for me to say anything right now. All right, thank All you, right. Coach. Again, best of luck. Thank you. Bill? All right. Thank you, Jim. And that will be the question that everybody's talking about in Norman. There's no question as uh, Oklahoma awaits Oklahoma State. And will Peterson play or not? Hey, this is Bill Land for Gary Reason. Jim Knox saying so long from Waco. Oklahoma wins at 36 to 10. Now let's join Michael Eaves and company in our college football Saturday studio in Los Angeles.